Hey, uh, I'm Rusty Kelly. And I'm Amelia McKay. And this is the Breathing Problem Productions podcast. Uh, we're back already. You know, it, we, ha- <laughs> we had like uh, a year long um, break. Break. And then all of a sudden we're, um, we're, we're trying to do more and, and we're trying to kind of do like looser episodes. Mm -hmm. So our last episode was something that we had um, in our heads for like a year. It was about Brisson and Mouchette, something that's super important to us, but we're like, Hey, let's keep, keep going at this. You know, we've got some momentum going. Mm -hmm. So we're going to talk about two interesting things. I think Uh, we're, we're going to talk about two episodes of the tyra banks show um tyra banks as you know the or actually it was called tyra i guess but uh was the african-american model who rose to fame in the 90s uh right yeah (laughs) Uh, and created as everyone knows america's next top model in 2003 which ran from 2003 to 2018 and then had a kind of short-lived talk show from 2005 to 2010 that's just really crazy um, and interesting to watch. And so the two things we're going to be talking about are two different interviews Tyra did. The first is an interview with uh, former porn star Sasha Gray uh, from, I believe, 2000, I want to say 2007. Yes, 2007. And um, the other one is an interview with... uh, Naomi Campbell, I don't have the year offhand, but before 2010, I assume. After after the phone throwing incident. Yes. And um, Naomi got We're going to get into that, yeah. (laughs) Uh, And if you can, yeah, we'll get that. But the point is, this isn't a history of Tyra Banks or a history of America's Next Top Model. Those could be interesting episodes because we're both fans of America's Next Top Model and the fans of like the history of Tyra I think one thing we could say though now is Tyra's definitely in the world of pop culture a controversial figure Mm -hmm. yeah Uh, there's like so many TikToks and YouTube videos talking about we never realized how problematic Tyra Banks was (laughs) and it talks about you know the the intense weirdness for lack of a better word that Tyra had towards contestants and her kind of um issues with black identity and feminism and herself yeah and Uh, wanting to break the you know the the system of like modeling and she thought she could be progressive in that but in fact she actually kind of like did the opposite of everything yeah it wasn't just reinforcing these uh kind of played out stereotypes of what a model should be that's why i mean someday we should talk about mary's next top model yeah because tyra is at once using the at the time the kind of conversation about why are what are models bad for the world are they making girls uh have eating disorders like is modeling this negative thing and so there was a kind of progressive like no, like we're going to create new models. They're going to be thicker or bigger or not just all white. Right. And I'm Tyra and we're going to repackage this. And But at the same time, she was using these girls to essentially do a jumping off point from this is the end of my modeling career. I want to find something new for myself. So I'm going to make not just entertainment, but I'm going to kind of control the show. And that's why the, the America's Next Top Model was you watch it and it's so personal. The show feels very... Uh, much like Tyra's baby and uh, (laughs) like the issues that Tyra maybe has with herself and the world and with other people get revealed, revealed like a, like a on stage. Um, Yeah. On accident. Cause she's kind of like just there to, you know, she has full reign, free reign on (laughs) the show. So it does. And that's why, again, something that's interesting to us as people that are interest, interested in the complex nature of human beings, America's Next Top Model showcased that really intensely. And I think now, of course, it's interesting how there's all these videos that at the time when the show was watching, and I loved to watch it at its peak, um, it was clear that there was really weird stuff that was going on and not just the classic meme of like, we, the, we were rooting for you. We were all rooting for you or I was rooting for you. How dare you. Uh, meme of her basically people don't know yelling at a contestant, 
um, because she's saying the contestant isn't trying enough and it's she uses uh, the contestant's own kind of poverty against her saying that she's not going to make it as a model and she's going to be in her poor Ma- she's going to be <laughs> it, on the mattress on her floor with her like little baby it's like, really it's twisted really twisted. It's re- and again it's like of course there's there's more stuff but it's all you know more yeah. complex and there's okay there's plenty of people who have done poly podcasts youtube videos to talk about it but i think we can stop there and say that it's in that uh i think people like us can say we're interested in those problematic things that make us human and interesting. And now the thing that we're really talking about and focusing on is these two episodes of the Tyra show. Uh, Tyra was, she had done this hugely popular, you know, syndicated, I believe it's syndicator was show. And it was, you know, all, there was all these other world versions of America's next top model and then, you know, Tyra's like, okay, I made it. Her ego so big. You know, another classic example, by the way, of Tyra's ego is when she decided she wanted to be a singer and she made the <laughs> contestants of the show, like, be actors, extras in uh, yeah. the music video. And it Backup almost... dancers. Or... Yeah, it almost felt like Tyra used the show's budget to make a music video for herself. Yes. And, uh, you know, like, that's really weird and probably not cool, but... Um, you know, it doesn't make her evil or anything, but the, the, these two episodes <laughs> of the show, I think are mind blowingly interesting. Number one, the interview with at the time rising porn star, Sasha Gray, somebody who, uh, now, now when we look back on it really it was a, created like this zeitgeist around her where, uh, Sasha Gray was trying to be like this big porn star and she made it like she became, um, another she became something that people not just porn people talked about it i wouldn't say to go far as to say she was like a deep throat type person where the whole world of pop culture was talking about sasha gray but she became a pretty big porn star um and sasha's whole kind of deal was like i know that i'm just like doing porn i know it's uh not i guess not pretty and I know what this is, and I and I'm getting into it with like my eyes wide open, and yeah, self ex- exploration. Right, I'm doing this as self exploration, and I'm I don't care if I get, like I'm not getting exploited because I know I'm doing it, and I'm gonna be the biggest, best, you know, sleaziest, sluttiest porn star, and no one's gonna stop me. And I think a lot of people were interested in that, and like uh, I'm sure people who liked consuming her pornography were more and she was probably i guess aware of that maybe that they were like we don't care we just think you're hot or whatever but she really in her style of porn really got into it she's very vocal like you know uh do this to me do that to me it felt like she was kind of i don't want to say in charge but what she was i guess selling was that she knew how how kind of dirty this was and she was into it too Yeah, Um, yeah and i think and it seems like Sasha Gray is a streamer now and she's doing great and that's sick and I'm totally, uh, that's awesome. And I think though, what Tyra, the whole time she's interviewing Sasha is trying to essentially be like, get Sasha to be like, yeah, I was molested as a girl and this is why I do porn. Like it's so fucked up. Yeah. If you, we're going to go through the interview, it's only 16 minutes long and we're going to like essentially critique it and talk about it. But there's two really interesting things going on. There's two, both sides of this argument, Tyra and Sasha have a point they want to make mm-hmm. and minds they want to change. Mm-hmm. And I think you, what's interesting about the interview is both of their desires are kind of on display. Uh-huh. Sasha wants to kind of showcase that she knows why she's doing it. She's not being exploited. She's in control and... I don't think that that you can ever fully be in control of right. of the way that people consume the porn that so you're So would in. you say that like in their conversation Sasha's coming from this very like pro uh, or like a uh, uh, sex positive kind of point of view and then Tyra's kind of like questioning that and then like being kind I, of Yeah, I think Would you say it's like sh- Tyra's being anti 
um, or sex negative. I mean, undoubtedly, that? yes. I mean, this is at the time, un, like porn was bad. If yeah. you do porn, you're weird. Like that's undoubtedly what Tyra is essentially saying. But I think what's interesting about Sasha Gray, because this came out in 2007, it was a very different time. So, you know, now everyone's developed a vernacular. By the way, we're a pro sex worker show. We're pro women in right. porn. Like, there's there's no anti sex anti porn in this conversation. But we're gonna have a, a complex, in our opinion, conversation mm-hmm. about it. So forewarning. But I I think that that kind of vernacular wasn't really used by Sasha. She wasn't necess- maybe underneath. She's trying to to give some of that. Like like I think now if you go on TikTok or YouTube, there's a million sex workers who understand the way they want to portray themselves and they have kind of their a series of identities that they have that are influenced or informed by feminism and different sure. and sex worker essays and identities and, and ideologies um where they would i think sasha is probably not coming from it in the exact place which makes it a little which makes it i think complicated and interesting um I could probably go on and on. We should just listen to it. But I think what the what I okay. I'll say this. So the reason this first interview is really important to me is because the first breathing problem full length, which is the noise industrial project that I both of us do now, it began as a solo project, and in two thousand, I believe this is this tape came out in two thousand eight. I want to say, and um. I'm sorry, I don't know the exact date. Uh, I could look it up, but um, needless to say, uh, there, it, I sampled this a cut up version of this interview where it's the interview and uh, and um, the uh, I put some effects through it and there's some samples over it, but mostly the interview is pretty forefronted. And then in the booklet for the cassette. I actually transcribed by hand the entire interview, but by the way, I also, uh, side note, um, the, the way I, I organized the interview, it said interviewer and I'd write Tyra's <laughs> part and then I wrote and then performer and it was Sasha's part and I spelled performer wrong. I wrote <laughs> preformer and I wrote preformer um, so many times incorrectly and it's very embarrassing <laughs> no one's ever said that to me probably because they don't care but now you, if you want you, they notice it. you, no. can, <laughs> you can make fun of me yeah. for it if you have the actual booklet but um uh so um this interview was kind of the reasons i just gave was really interesting because both people had their own reasons for doing the interview and wanted the other person to kind of there was a debate and I think it showcased these two conversations about, you know, being anti-sex, pro-sex, and um, and all of the kind of messiness in between. Mm-hmm. Um, which, like I, each person's agenda of yeah, yes, yeah. the agenda of the pornographer or the person <laughs> who act who is the porn you know performer, and the anti-sex kind of interviewer. And mm-hmm. I don't. I could cut. I could keep going on and on, but I think the the audience probably would rather just hear the interview and us talking about it. Uh, um, so um, let's go through it. So uh, we're going to listen to the interview, and when you hear it, hopefully you'll probably hear some pieces of it being cut in and out so you're going to have some reference. So this is Tyra Banks interviewing Sasha Gray. Uh, and this is uh, February 8th, 2007. So. so, Sasha, you are 18 years old. Yes. 18 years old and have done 80 porn movies. Around that, yeah. Around that. Mm-hmm. I'm looking at you right now, and you look like somebody that I went to middle school with, like somebody that went to my school, eighth grade. Do you think that is an appeal, that you look so young? Um, I definitely can say that there are there is a market for that, that people want to see the young, fresh face. Um, but I do get typecast sometimes, but I, I would say probably only out of those 80 or so videos have I had to do that probably five or six times. To act like you're younger than you are, to act like 
schoolgirl. I don't do it though. I mean, you know, you wear the clothes, you wear the wardrobe, but I try to change that. I don't, you know, I don't want to portray that. That's mm -hmm. not. Um, portraying that. So I, I think this part's pretty interesting. So Tyra immediately begins the interview by saying, you know, you're 18, you look like somebody I went to high school with, which is just weird because, yeah, T Sasha Gray is 18. She is young. And she's basically, Tyra's trying to kind of lay out this idea that people are watching you because you look young and men are, you know, pervert, pedophile-ish type people, which, um, you know what, like those, there are lots of reasons why people consume horn and some of them are, are definitely because men probably want to see young women performing. And I think there, a lot of um, what th this interview has that's an issue with where it's almost like Tyra's trying to blame Sasha for the porn industry and how <laughs> twisted it can be. Keep in mind, we're not into porn, but you know, um, and and those tastes and what the tastes are mm -hmm. on her on yeah on Sasha yeah, yeah totally like it's not Sasha's fault that uh, men are interested in young girls or you know teenage 18 year old you know legal right. or beyond um but then what makes i think the interview interesting is that sasha immediately tries to uh kind of uh change tyra's mind where she's like yeah yeah people are interested in that because i'm 18 um but you know i try not to portray it that way i you know i'll wear the outfits but i also try to change things up which i think is interesting because Ty Sasha probably could have just said, "Oh well, I'm people like seeing like hot girls, and I'm a hot girl, and like that's the way that they see me." Um, but I think she want Tyra or Sasha wanted Tyra to understand, like, "Oh, I know how they see me, but don't worry, like I don't portray myself as young." Um, and again, I think it's a symptom of the porn industry, which is that. The porn industry is going to eat you alive and and kind of showcase you however they want. Yeah, and take advantage of whatever you have. Yeah. Right. Tyra immediately wants Sasha to to feel some kind of guilt. Maybe I don't know. Win the argument and say, "Oh, there's creeps looking at you." But I think also Sasha, because we're not deconstructing a debate. This isn't about winning the debate, but. The desire, Sasha, interestingly enough, has a desire to disarm Tyra by saying, I try to showcase myself in a different light. Um, when I don't know, it, it, yes, Sasha could wear a schoolgirl outfit like she mentions, yeah, but I think even if Sasha was wearing like jeans and a t shirt she's gonna get naked, so that doesn't really change anything, right? And it's a simp, it, it's like. You know, I don't know what your thoughts are, but... Um, no, I agree with what you're saying. Um, yeah, it's just, like, the whole, like, you know, coming at this, she's this expert on her own side. And so she's going to seem... Like, she's going to be talking about all of this stuff um, in ways like that kind of downgrade... Way? Oh, downplay, right. Downplay, um, you know any any sort of like aspect of of the even desire the possibility of the age, that yeah yes, yeah the, you can be this age and you know this is how you're gonna be eaten up and, and sold. yeah yeah um the things okay. that you did tell me about the the 50 year old co-star on the on the set of a movie oh let's see that was um the first thing i did and the uh, very first thing you did yeah my first scene and um he was 50 years old he's he might be a couple years older than that, yeah. And you were only 18. Mm -hmm. And um, he he's actually one of the most um, well-known porn stars in this industry. Um, and it was during uh, a fellatio scene. And, and the oral um, sex? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, he was just telling me, oh, I'd like to do this to you, I'd like to do that. And he's, he's Italian, so I can't really understand him. And I said, oh, would you like to punch me in the stomach? Go ahead. And he was just shocked. He's, you know, he didn't expect that from me. Mm -hmm. And um, that's the big answer. And so you asked him to punch you in your mm -hmm. stomach, and he punched you in your stomach. No, he didn't. So uh, I think won. Sasha, interestingly here, kind of uh, disarms Tyra by trying to shock her. Shock her. Yeah. <laughs> um, which I really liked because it was essentially, and this is why I think I was drawn to the interview, because 
in Sasha's desire to take charge, she almost reminds me of like someone who's a born performer, like I don't know, fucking noise artist, whatever. Which, by the way, she she did Industrial Project, but that's not here there or there. Um, Sasha says, "Oh yeah, the, my first scene." Because Tyra's like, "That guy was fifteen, you were eighteen. Again, this kind of guilt trip. Like, uh, are you?" I don't know. I feel like she's in, in trying to somehow say you're promoting pedophilia or something like that. Mm-hmm. And instead, Sasha's like, well, well, I don't know. He kind of he could have been older than 50. And then I told him to punch me in my fucking stomach and I didn't give yeah. a shit. And number one, though, that's what Sasha Gray was selling. Yeah. Like, I'm the edgy, the edgy, dirty I'm the edgiest whore. of the edgy. Uh, you don't even have to tell me what to do. I will. I'll. I'll ask you to do the most degrading thing to me. Right, yeah. and I like it. And um, and she knew how to package herself because that's how people. How you know? Long. That's why people still probably it's talk about her. It's unexpected. Yeah. It's and I guess it could. You could say it's unexpected or shocking. Come coming from her, who looks the way she does. Um, and so she used that to her advantage as well. Like this whole. Yeah. Yeah this whole thing um and tyra immediately changes the subject because sasha definitely disarms her and uh yeah um i want you to take me to your um that very first scene that very first Mm -hmm. sex scene and what was it like walking on that set were you scared were Um, you nervous you're 18 years old the first scene i did i was nervous the whole day because i just didn't want to mess up i didn't want to be shell shocked and just sit there like, you know, and have no idea what to do. But once the actual scene started, once I was there in it, I felt completely in my own, mm-hmm. in my own element. And how far will you go? What um, will you? What won't you do? Because I know you well, say you do a lot. Well, I won't do anything that has to do with children, and anything that has to do with animals. So you'll have anal sex mm-hmm. on film. I do almost every scene. Every scene. I, I quickly want to say, like, you know, Sasha again says something that's, I'm in control. I was in my element. I wasn't scared anymore. I I made sure I was in control. And then Tyra takes the interview back to, what won't you do? Yeah. Right. Like and uh, like implying. And then she goes on this list of like, S- Sasha's like, I won't do anything illegal. Essentially, is what she's saying. And then Tyra's like. Okay, well, I'm going to go down the list of, like, all these d- disgusting things, you know. She I, starts with anal sex. Right. Mo- it's <laughs> more shame. Laugh. Just about. Yeah. And I've heard that you do gangbang scenes. What is a gangbang scene? It's mm-hmm. just a large group of men with one girl. And how many guys have been on you at one time in one scene? Um, I did one of those, and it was 15 guys. 15 guys on you? Again, she's like, <laughs> she's like, what's a gangbang? It feels like it, it's, like, almost funny how yeah. brutal the Tyra questions are. It feels like a movie, like a lifetime movie about an evil mother who's like trying to say the harshest, you know, stuff to a person to make them feel, feel like shit. Um, and she's like, what's a gangbang? Oh, it's, you know, multiple guys on one girl. <laughs> what's the, what's the highest amount? And then it, that almost feels like this desire for not just the details, of like, give me the details, but like, now Tyra's buying what Sasha's selling. Yeah, yeah. Which Go is, ahead and shock our audience. Well, yeah. Not, yeah, and not just shock, shock. Like it's like saying, "What kind of cars do you sell? What's your what's your best yeah. seller?" Oh yeah, totally. And so Tyra, of course, is trying to um, make everyone disgusted and essentially shame Sasha. Now she's just allowing Sasha to sell the work, which is probably why Sasha came on there to begin with. Yeah. Um. Yeah. How did you tell your family that you were getting into this the first time? What did um, you tell them? It was when I was here for about two weeks. The first two weeks I moved down here, and my mom had a, um, had something to do with work down here. So she said, you know, that's a good chance to come see you. Her and uh, my sister came, and I showed them around Hollywood, and we went out to eat. And when they dropped me off, I, I kept trying to think of ways to say it all night. But there's really no right way to say that, especially to your mother. Mm-hmm. And um, I just said the real reason I came... Well, I, First, I started out by saying, I can't expect to get respect from you unless I have the respect to tell you. So I said, I, the real reason I came down here was to do porn. And that's how it went. And what, did, what was her response? Oh, God this, God that. Oh, my God. You know, your body is sacred. It's a temple. Mm-hmm. Um, my sister laughed. 
but I think that's more of the, you know, I'm afraid laugh than a ha ha funny laugh. But um, this My interview was actually really strange for me, Sasha, because I feel like I'm talking to a young girl. I am talking to a young girl, and you look very young. Um, the things that you're talking about, you talk about them just so lightly, and it's it's just a lot. And um, we're gonna take a break, and um, her boyfriend Ian is here, and we're going to talk to him. And I need to regroup a little bit and um, get this together because this is very difficult for me. Okay, to again. With. Tyra says something like, we want you, like, I want you to tell me the horrible story of your family finding out that you're a disgusting porn star. <laughs> and again, what Sasha does is she tells a story that I think anyone can relate to. Maybe and we're not all telling our parents about porn, but says, you know, my mom and my sister came down. Again, again just humanizing herself as a smart. And my mother came down. You know, Sasha says this kind of nonsensical thing about, I've, you can't respect me unless I respect you. And, but, you know, essentially tells her the mom's shocked, the sister laughs, but, but Sasha's trying to kind of, maybe she's not even aware of it, but it, needless to say, I think it humanizes her more. And then, you know, immediately Tyra's like, I don't care about this. Like she, it's not even, it's bad interview 101, by the way, you know, as the interviewer, you should kind of uh, engage with the material maybe she could have said oh and then what'd your dad say or what whatever but just like uh, not even about how she's saying but well you know or like she just changes because oh she's not getting the reaction she wants which yeah. is i feel like i'm looking at a young girl you are a young girl so it goes back to you are a victim but i i think the other thing that's interesting to me is i think there is some truth to the harshness and the way that pornography and the, specifically the pornography industry, you know, we live in an age where I think more people are able to like do only fans and deal with it themselves. But undeniably there's the porn industry specifically at that time, like use the girls and spit them out, even Hollywood. So I think, um, the going back to her age is, is a disgusting tactic, but there's also a kind of truth to that in terms of the way the porn consumers see Sasha, right? Mm -hmm. Which is, yes, Tyra is being exploitative and mean and trying to shame her for an industry. And then the kind of looming thing is that the industry is always going back to her age. They don't care about, you know, uh, the the family and telling the family the story or how smart she the is, men yeah. who watch the porn sasha's porn yeah are going back to that thing and there so i think what's interesting is like tyra and then the consumers of porn and the industry of porn are one in the same and sasha almost feels like someone trying to take back control but then they're in this system that's constantly abusing their body and using their body and no matter how many times you kind of try to get your footing it grabs you and I was probably going to get into it later, but because in this interview, they mentioned S Sasha's boyfriend, this guy named Ian Cinnamon, who was essentially like her, I don't want to say pimp. What do they call it? Su A suitcase yeah. pimp. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, in the last, I don't know, decade, Sasha Gray, after she got out of porn, came out and said Ian forced her into porn, for lack of a better term, or, or really pushed her into it. Yeah. And that he was abusive to her. Um, I don't, th you know, I think all I can say is that's awful and it's terrible. And again, I think it makes the whole situation a lot more complex. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Because it's not about us saying like, oh, pornography is evil and women are, it's a, women aren't obviously just victims and it's not about the simplistic nature of that. But I think the, tr the kind of reality of her boyfriend even being there and trying to have a name for himself within the industry showcases the control of women's bodies. Anyway, yeah, I'm going sure, yeah. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. We'll just keep going. So Sasha, you know, before our break, with me talking to you, I, I find that you're cold and distant. So again, it's like, uh, you, you talk about these things like they're just like not a big deal. Like, but really what's happening is Tyra, number one, clearly didn't prepare correctly. Or whoever's writing the questions for her or whatever, like she's, she's what do you get from her? I get that she's intimidated. She uh, That's always mm -hmm. how I feel, though, with Tyra, is that she thinks that this is going to be a great idea and she's going to own this person. She's going to be in control. And be in control. And what happens is she ends up, like, halfway through being 
extremely uncomfortable because she's intimidated and out of her depth, which she was, yeah. you know. Yeah. So, totally, yes. Yeah. And it's like she's almost like, God, I got to get my bearings. This is so fucking Let's gross. take a break. So. Yeah, like, <laughs> but really it feels like she's like, oh, you're not giving me what I want. Yeah. Like the porn director or whatever you want to call it. You're not giving me the desperation that I want. Yes, yeah, totally. And hard, and I can't help but think that there is something that made you that way. That's a fucked up thing to say. I mean, it's again. This is why Tyra's called out. A lot of they lady. came back on like the from the break and just. <laughs> she says you're cold yeah. and hard. Yes, and and that's just such a harsh way to start. It, there's nothing really what she was saying before that. It wasn't that, cold that, and no, hard. No, not at all. She's yeah. nervous. She's on a fucking talk show being ripped apart in front of the whole world i'd say it's probably more a reflection of sasha's personality she's probably just that's the way she talks and yeah. she's got like a more flat way of speaking i mean fucking tyra banks is being harsh and cold there's a yeah. reason people like oprah but uh -huh. i think we could go look at oprah talking to porn stars she'd probably be much more like warm to them you know yeah definitely. like if like you're not supposed to immediately just showcase disgust absolutely but again it's almost like Tyra is trying to break her. She's like, you should be crying right now. You should be an idiot who is saying, oh, uh, uh, uh. And, and I think the truth is Tyra's insecure. And we see oh, that in, in, yes. in, in America's Next Top Model. Right. That yeah. you're part of this, you're part of this evil mechanism. But again, it's like blaming somebody for being part of porn industry. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, just like the classic like arrest the the you know prostitute and don't, don't arrest the john kind of thing yeah but immediately i forgot about this just her saying like you're so cold um no i just think when i'm dealing with business i'm dealing with business and you know i i'm trying to get my facts out there i'm trying to get my point out there i i mean i may what some people think look like a young girl but i'm actually a very responsible young woman a lot of porn stars when when they were younger, a big majority of them, if doing research, um, have said that they were sexually abused in some a way. A large amount. Were you sexually abused in any Not way? Not at all. No. I mean, so Tyra says, why are you cold? And she's just saying, no, I'm not cold. I'm a responsible young woman who's make she's essentially trying to say, I'm building my brand right and now, lady. I came lady. on here for that reason. I'm yeah. doing something. You can, like, harangue me and call me a victim, and uh, I'm just going to not cry and freak out and then tyra doesn't even it's like bad interviewing in a mechanical level at least respond to the answer so yeah. again because of tyra's insecurity she can't go oh you know like i don't know like oh yeah you are just this is you know maybe she's saying oh so is porn just like this industry this thing the stepping stone if you're a responsible young woman you could have you know become a doctor whatever the usual <laughs> bullshit but tyra is, it angers her, so she immediately is like, were you raped? Were you molested? And it's interesting because Sasha Gray goes, yeah, there were a lot of girls that were molested. I mean, the truth also is, like, how many women even who aren't porn stars have yeah, been sexually oh, abused? Yeah. This statistic doesn't... It yeah. means <laughs> nothing, really. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and she's like, no. It, again, it's just Tyra's asking bad questions that are awful and mean, but they're also kind of stupid. Like, just they're simplistic, right. you know? They're, if, if she wanted to disarm her and rip her apart, it's like, she it's not even good, you know what I mean? Right, right. <laughs> so, this is just something that you just want to do just because? Not just because I, you know, I have, like I said earlier, it's self-exploration firsthand, and I'm getting to do it in a sex-positive way. Well, and with going into porn, Sasha, there is a big percentage, as I said, of women that have had issues, whether mm -hmm. or not they want to admit them or not, or face them or not, mm -hmm. that there's a reason why they go into it. So it's not so much that, that, that I'm sitting here judging you for what you do, it's more of the reason why you're doing it. Do you understand? There's a difference of, everybody has a choice. You're mm -hmm. 18 years old. Pornography is legal. You're not going to go to jail for what you do. Exactly. But there's still a reason why everyone does everything, why everyone makes any choice that they make in their life. And that's why you're here. Because there's, there's a reason why I do this talk show. There's a reason why I broke up with the last boyfriend or he broke up with me or whatever it may be. There's a reason for everything. Okay. So as you said, you um, included this whole interview in your booklet in 2008. And... I just wanted to ask you, uh, 
you know, why why you were interested in in this and especially like kind of comment on like the last part there what she was yeah. saying about choices and all that for sure um so i think there's kind of a loop of tyra again you know sasha answers to say like i'm you know responsible young woman and then tyra says you know were you sexually abused she says no and then she's like so this is just something you want to do which make is insane it's like well yeah she wants to survive and live but then uh, again, Sasha doesn't talk about money, which I think is in- interesting. She, I, and I just, I having to go back and say I was wrong because she does use the term sex positive. She says it's self exploration and I'm getting to do it in a sex positive way. It's from like sex positive, Susie Bright, all those kind of uh, people. Um, so she's definitely using terminology from that. Um, and then Tyra goes back to. I'm not going to even respond to that. You're hiding something. I know it. Tell me the truth. I, like Tyra's basically implying like I knew all along that you were raped. But then she says something that's really kind of incredible because she says um there's a reason that we do everything. There's a reason I do this talk show and there's a reason you do porn and that's really what my interest is 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 about. Um the desire for Tyra's ego to be indulged for her to feel like this kind of moral arbiter of what's right and wrong and and really though I think it's less about morals for her and more about I'm the smart woman who's in charge who's made the right choices who's made the right choices because yeah. we go back to the Tyra show she's always judging people for the way they live like it, I don't know again I'm white I'm a man but I I would I do think it's interesting that she seems to have a very specific worldview, which seems to be like a kind of, I'm not a victim. I worked really hard. My mother and, and I worked really hard and we made it. And there's lots of victims who just do the the wrong choice in the world, whether it's like drug dealing or whatever, you know, or sex work. And what do you think? Well, again, it kind of goes back to me saying like, I think it comes from this weird thing maybe in her this could go into the next part really i could save it for then but um i would just say you know tyra's insecurity kind of comes out in that way as well because you know thinking about her telling herself that she's made all these right choices i think it goes back even to like her modeling days when she compared herself to other models that were more successful and the choices that they were making at the time they they were a little more free uh to party you could say because tyra um i don't know if everybody knows this but she had her mother around her throughout her entire career especially her early career yeah and her mother really sheltered her from that world of partying models partying and so I think it goes into like that kind of thing of being like, I made these right choices and Right. And, and I was I, protected. My yeah. mom made the right decision. I'm not I didn't become like and that's good. It's like Tyra had a mother who was there. There's lots of, you know, girls and guys that go into the world of entertainment or modeling and they're completely they fall apart because maybe they didn't have that person to care for them and watch it's them. It's true, but I, I do think that there's a part of her that regrets having right. her mother around and like resents that. her mom maybe. And, and in, in that way because you know, Naomi, the one person that she compares herself to all the time. Naomi Campbell. She she was she was in the scene. She wasn't just a model. She was uh, in the in the, the high group. Because, the, the zeitgeist of the yes. model, actor, right. the mid-90s world. Like, she made it. And Tyra was... I mean, we're going to get in that in a second. Yeah, well, let's get into it later. But the point is, is like, this moment Tyra's... Instead of realizing, yeah, why are you asking these questions, Tyra? And what are you trying to get at? And the truth of, you know, Sasha Gray, which is, we dealt with this. I don't. Did we ever do an episode about Ian Chong? We should. No, we should. This right. whole episode has made me realize that. Right. Well, there's there, there's a bunch of parallels we could talk about. Right. Then. Well, you know, one of Amelia and I, we have a project called Convave Convex that's all about porn star Annabelle Chong and her documentary Sex: The Annabelle Chong Story, which we. We'll get into a separate episode, but it's about um, the concept of like the sex, the pornographer who's self-aware and is a feminist studies major and who tries to get 
thrown into the pornography machine and tries to stay in control and it doesn't work and there's all these forces and her own identity and insecurity and so when i think about what Ty- what sasha's saying which is this is self-expiration it's sex positive but she never mentions like the money aspect or it's like those things are true you shouldn't h- hate the fact that you have you know that you have sex and sex isn't a negative thing but maybe the truth also that there is this ugly machine that tries to degrade and exploit and destroy you, just like all, you know, work, whether in a factory or anything. So we're not trying to focus on pornography as the worst version of anything else. But so when we say the question of, you know, you know, Sasha probably wasn't molested. I think she's telling the truth. You don't do pornography because you were molested or some, or I didn't have a dad or whatever bullshit. You do pornography for your own reasons. But I think, again, Sasha, what's interesting to me is trying to showcase herself as the porn star who's in control and is self-aware. The enlightened porn star. Right, the enlightened porn star, but that this whole system just can break you down and destroy you. And then the the next part... Actually, I think in a way, uh, that's a tactic, is in a way of, of... Uh, the industry is to make women feel as though they're enlightened and in control and empowered by all of that, which is its own complicated right. thing. Right, yeah, and, and that's the thing. And then I think the a great example of not just the industry is the, the next part of the interview is they interview her boyfriend slash manager who we now know kind of pushed her into pornography and controlled her and abused her. And so that's kind of this looming thing of using the terminology of being in control Sasha, but then also the reality of being abused by a man who's, I mean, look at, let's look at, you know, sex work. The, the, some of the worst parts of it are the men that are involved that control women, right? So maybe that's why there's in the future now, maybe things like OnlyFans are a little better or even camming in some respects because people are in control and there's, that's complicated too, but it's not about Sasha being bad, but about the system and the people that are using her and kind of injecting her with kind of things to say, which maybe are true. She should be sex positive. She should explore, but the kind of, and she should sell herself and say, I'm the enlightened porn star, but then there's the looming underbelly in reality. But so that's why this is also interesting and complex to me. Two people that are kind of arguing and fighting, but, have their own things to hide and things that they don't want to explore. Uh. In the audience right now is Sasha's boyfriend, Ian. And uh, where are you, Ian? Hi, Hi, Ian. Hello. So, Ian, how is it like having a a, a porn star girlfriend, especially uh, being 18 years old? It's, it's different. It's progressive, you know. It it's forced, progressive? Yeah, it's, you know, how many relationships are you in where you get, uh, you know, STD tests every, you know, month, you know? I mean, I can't, when I was in college, I didn't do that, you know? So she gets an STD, you get an STD test every month? Every month, every 25 days. Have you ever got an STD from a scene? Yes, I have. You have? Mm-hmm. What STD did you get from a scene? I have gonorrhea. How did you get uh, gonorrhea? Just from a male partner yeah. in a scene? Yeah, it's going to be from somebody you work with. All right. And you're, how old are you, 31? 31. You're 31 years old. And she's 18. That's correct, yes. Anything sound weird in that to you? No, I mean, of course, you know, the age difference, you know, we knew each other as friends before, you know. Before, I didn't know she was going to choose this. Before. Of course, there's a lot of red flags here. Um, number one, one thing we'll say that's interesting is Sasha's very truthful and it's like, yeah, I did have, I did get an STD and it, that happens and like, that's a good answer um, and it, it's a truthful answer um, and that kind of makes Sasha, or makes Tyra a little uncomfortable but then she does say something that's true it's like you're 31 and she's 18 and he's like I knew her before and you're like wait you knew her before she was 18 <laughs> you were friends you were friends I say that in air quotes um like when you were uh 29 and she was 17 or, or even worse or like, yeah right. it, it gets worse <laughs> no but it, and again it's like this is the cliche story of the pimp who manipulates the young underage girl. You know, literally, uh, that there's that movie Red Rocket uh, that came out last year about a, a, suitcase, a pimp. suitcase pimp trying to get a young girl to go and be a... But whatever. But I think this is this really gross underbelly of 
pimping out a girl, manipulating her. And I think there's, I, I don't want to be so simple, like such a kind of simple person to be like, and this showcases how fucked, how everyone's lying to each other in the sex industry. And they're all trying to use this stuff to hide the truth. But it's more like there's these, there's things that are true about the, about you being able to, a woman that can use her sexuality to do whatever she wants to do. And pornography is legal, and it's, there's people that probably have good experiences, or maybe they have mixed experiences, like all work. But I think this guy showcases the really grotesque truth of some cases of people, and the and if they're forced into porn, or not forced but manipulated. I don't know. What do you think? Um. Yeah, I I um. This is super uncomfortable, like yeah. for everybody and and Tyra too. <laughs> and it's weird because Tyra does give one good answer, which is, "Doesn't this seem weird?" And I think for the time that it was shown, two thousand seven, like that kind of huge red flag wasn't in. Like, I'm sure some people have been like, "Oh, whatever, that's that's beside the point," you know? Yeah. Um. But you know, we built a strong relationship as friends, you know, mm -hmm. and. How does your family feel about you being with an 18-year-old porn star? They're fine, you know. I mean, as long as you're not hurting anybody. As so your long family's as... okay with this? Yeah. Your mother is okay with this? Yeah. My mother's a very progressive woman. I mean, My mother's was... progressive too, but if I was a porn star, she wouldn't be so happy with that. Yeah. Everyone's different. Everyone has their different opinions. Most definitely. Sasha's manager, Mark Spiegler, is with us in the audience. Did I say that right, Spiegler? Yes, sir. Hi, Mark. So, um, Sasha sought you out. To, to be her manager, to be her agent, right? Mm -hmm. And what is the impression that you, when she walked into your office, what did you see? Well, actually, first she emailed me, and then I spoke to her on the phone. And as you, uh, you can see, she's highly intelligent, very mature for her. When you say about the age difference, like, you know, age does not always make you know, a child or a woman. I mean, she's very mature. For If you spoke to her over the phone, you'd think she was 31 years old. But uh, I spoke to her. She seemed like this is what she wanted to do. Like, she said she, she not only researched, like, agents, but she watched the movies. This is really what she wanted to do. And, and I, she had sent me pictures and stuff. I said, well, if you look like the pictures and, and really, you know, do what you say you're going to do and everything, you should... Did did really she, well. What did she say she was going to do? Well, she said, she sent me a list of what she was going to do, and she it was pretty much everything they do in this business. Sasha, what are your hopes for your future? Um, I mean, this isn't something we have to comment on, but Spiegler girls, it's like a there's a he, I guess Mark Spiegler. I could be doing this wrong, but is like a well known, like the best of the best porn kind of manager who will get you the best deals with the best. Uh, production companies I, I, I could be saying that all wrong but I know about Mark Spiegler specifically from this really great podcast that's worth checking out called The Butterfly Effect by this guy uh, his name is uh, I think it's John Ronson yeah um, and it's worth listening to but there's a whole thing about who the Spiegler girls are and basically if you're a Spiegler girl you get all the jobs and if you're not you know you it's harder um, so it sounds like Sasha immediately either from someone telling her or she knew to go after this guy and say like if I want to get big in the industry he's the guy but I, it, whatever um, I would also like to direct in this business not only direct I'd like to produce independent films mm -hmm. independent pornography films no independent just mainstream yeah okay and what else do you want children I want children, I want to travel the world, I want to see, I want to explore, I want to write, I want to, I want to live life. Mm -hmm. Well, I hope the best for you. Thank I you. really, really do. Uh, that's it. Um, basically, the end is kind of just like, you know, Sasha saying, uh, but really the interview ends with, I would say, the, the question of that we all do what we want to do and we all have a reason for what we do. Um, but the, the, I think the boyfriend being interviewed for a second, I don't know. It's just funny because he's so not prepared. He's like, I think it's really progressive because we get dr like STD tests. Like, every, like anyone can get STD <laughs> tests. Um, but everyone seems unprepared for this interview, which is interesting. Um, except maybe Sasha. 
but uh, I don't know. Uh, what do you think about it overall? Uh, do you think, I guess it to me, it just showcases what we're about to see also, which is that Tyra wants to control the conversation. She has a agenda. Yes. And if it kind of gets off track, it really it pisses gets off her track off. Only because of her insecurities and her inability to handle what's coming at her because right. she's unprepared and, you know, um, like I said, out of her depth, she does the same exact kind of thing with Naomi where right. she kind of comes in thinking that she has this total handle and that she's going to own her. <laughs> and then it pretty much falls apart. As as and, it, yeah. 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 Um, okay. So I, I would just say, you know, that this is the end of the Sasha Gray section. Um, I think we kind of said everything, but I, I ultimately I think I'm interested and I think we're interested in the complexities of both parts of the interview. I would say, uh, Sasha isn't doing anything wrong or saying anything wrong. Tyra's definitely being pretty shitty and trying to make her feel shame about an industry she has no control over. And admit to what isn't true in a, in a lot of senses. Right. She wants her to be like, you're the victim. You're blah, blah, blah. But I think similarly, though, there's a kind of looming truth about who we, what we know now, which is that Ian Cinnamon is an abusive like piece of shit pimp or worse. And that there's a kind of, I think in some ways Tyra Banks might see this interview and go, look, I was right, but she's not right. But at the same time, there's a brutal reality that can exist in, not, like I said, sex work, but any job, which is you doing what you do to have to survive, but then there's also people that can manipulate you and chew you up and spit you out along the way. Now, you know, um, uh, Sasha Gray doesn't have a bad ending. She has a good ending. Like she seems to be, doing stuff on Twitch and, and created a whole, she became a mini celebrity in her own right. And she acted in this film, the girlfriend experience that Steven Soderbergh made. So like she, she's not some sad suicide story or drug addict story. Um, she clearly what is and was really smart and did something for herself. But I think what's interesting is what are we all trying to sell for, to make ourselves feel more whole and better about what we're doing. Not, and, uh, all people do that, including me. We're all trying to package things to make to make the way we see ourselves feel more whole. Yeah, and you're trying to sterilize it, and part of that process is to sometimes ignore your own human experience sometimes. Right, to downplay know? things that might be bad and abusive or yeah. complex, degrading, and back to, to her, you know, the, like, the truth of like, oh, yes, maybe they look at me because I'm young, but I try to like wear different outfits when the porn industry is basically, or the consumers of the porn industry are saying like, no, all we care about is that. Um, so we're going to move on. This is less, the next conversation is kind of the meat or maybe it's, um, which is going to be a conversation that Tyra had with Naomi Campbell. Um, so I'm going to bring up the interview. Um, all right, so we're back. Um, this next section, do you want to get into what it is? So this is the Tyra Banks interview with Naomi Campbell. Uh, what year is this from? I don't know. Um, I want to say like 2009. Yeah, I think that's right. Um, so Tyra and Naomi have a long history that goes way back and... We pretty much only know this from very vague stories where Tyra is clearly talking about Naomi and there seems to be some drama about how Naomi made it extremely impossible for Tyra in the modeling world. She basically alienated her and... Um, it seems like any time they did any kind of work together that Naomi was very mean to Tyra. And Tyra would probably claim that Naomi Campbell was her bully. Right. <laughs> um, and so after Naomi Campbell got called out for throwing her phone at, I don't think it even was her assistant. I think it was like um, right. a housekeeper or something like that. It's <clears throat> but, a, yeah. 
Wait, go, what was it? What's the detail? Um, so it says there's multiple <laughs> cases. It says <laughs> first case was heard in February 2000. Campbell pleaded guilty in Toronto to assaulting her personal assistant with a phone. Um, and then she paid her and had to go to anger management classes. And then by 2006, eight other employees and associates had come forward with claims of abuse. Mm-hmm. During this time, Campbell was photographed wearing a chip and pepper shirt that said, Naomi hit me and loved it, which that's fucking cr- like like you you're known to abuse the people that work for you right. so much as to, someone made a shirt for you um it says to, 2007 campbell pleaded guilty in new york to assaulting her former housekeeper you're right who had accused campbell of throwing a blackberry at her in 2006 right so as as you can guess tyra got a huge kick out of this out of naomi's cancellation back in the day right it's really not the same as now yeah no one, but I mean, yeah. um and so her delight at this you know public um thing about naomi um it made tiger really want to have naomi on her talk show so that she could get her to admit is my opinion that she bullied tyra mm-hmm um, but it really doesn't work, so. Yeah, it it sounds like this is, like, the one of the most psycho, um, like, it feels like, I don't want to be like, oh, it's psych-. it feels, like, surreal. Mm-hmm. It feels like somebody's became a millionaire and created some kind of, like, wish fulfillment. That's what it feels like. It uh-huh. feels like you, if you have an enemy or someone you feel wronged you, even if it's not true, it's like the fantasy where you like confront. You get the so person famous you that hate. you yes. have her on your talk show and you you own your bully. Yeah, you yeah. own her and you humiliate her. Like yeah. Tyra is trying. Even though this is like pre what we define as like cancellation, Tyra's trying to like some kind of world where Twitter's a real thing and you get to like go in a fucking room and like try to make a crowd <laughs> agree to like publicly shame somebody. It feels like this psychodrama that's real and insane. Um, it's maybe one of the weirdest things ever when I'm like, I'm mad when I try to explain to someone, you know, Tyra Banks had her like person. She hated the most Naomi Campbell because she was jealous of her on her show. She took the audience out and harangued and kind of abused Naomi Campbell and Naomi Campbell's like a good sport the whole time yeah you know Naomi Campbell almost feels like she's just being like this poor poor crazy person oh my god I think the only reason why Naomi did this was because of what happened right and her publicity and yeah. she was told by her PR team that it would be a good idea if you go on the tire show and like yeah yeah <laughs> people um, will watch it and they'll also I mean she she did she I think she did the right thing and she did humanize herself on this interview I would say yeah I'm gonna be honest and also think that like I don't think many people care like I think no. some people probably watched it but like that's the thing Naomi Campbell it w- was so big and is, is so big that like I remember people talking about the stuff but it was almost like a joke like she threw like that's actually fucked up by the way like abuse and being known for abusing your assistants and housekeepers is like really fucked up and gross yeah. and that's a whole other conversation right but like <laughs> she was just like fine she still is fine she's fine yeah um but like Tyra's not no one really ta- yeah that's yeah Tyra has a job I, I looked it up I guess she's like a host for Dancing with the Stars but like she is rich and she though like i'd say like in the world of people on youtube like tyra is gone like people have gone over every ep- like so many episodes of next top model america's next top model so many episodes of the show and really ripped her their memes now and right. yeah everybody has seen every instance of tyra which she probably would pray to have a race from right. the minds of everyone but it's there and I mean, it's not going anywhere i wish i could talk to tyra banks and be like what do you think of all this because i'm sure she's just like this is just people are so mean and awful i'm sure she has no way of even acknowledging how weird she behaved on all these shows um but back to this this so let's assume that tyra banks became a model and became huge in the sports illustrated swimsuit world that's, that's what, what happened she yeah. was a big sports well, illustrated what happened girl. she tried to make it in the industry by like doing the top model industry yeah and she was doing runway and stuff like that and then later you know she was told you're too commercial and she was and she's too bubblegum 
you know. Uh, and so she did Sports Illustrated instead. Right. And so that, that became her. She blew up. And then leech. she also did, um, what, Victoria's Secret stuff. Yeah. Probably lesser. And it seemed Tyra did something smart. She was like, this has a shelf life. I want to be more than this. If I'm not going to become a, you know, Naomi Campbell, I'm going to do my own thing. And she did something great. She, for whatever your thoughts on Top Model are, it was this giant, huge, popular thing. And by the way, like, both Amelia and I, like, the first five seasons are gold, like, reality show gold. The first season especially is incredibly entertaining and interesting to watch. Yeah. Um, also, by the way, Australia's Next Top Model yes. is Amelia's fave. Yeah, I love Australia's and it's Next like, Top Model. <laughs> they took it off Amazon or Hulu, so now it's, like, impossible to watch. But yeah. that's, like side note but um she did this incredible thing created a hit show um and then did the tyra show as a side thing that at the t it got pretty big i mean i can remember the like now infamous episode where tyra wears a fat suit and <laughs> cries about how hard it is to be fat which is another insane concept <laughs> like it's so cheesy and like jackass e basically yeah. and she's like I, I never realized how awful it is to be fat like remember the kiss my fat ass yeah, and then <laughs> inversely when she started to gain weight and people took pictures of her she like did this whole personal vendetta like you know she's being judged and she cries and says kiss my fat ass um where the show basically just felt like she needed people to, to like cheer for her on tv which hey maybe we probably all wish we had that but um like Tyra had every reason to be really proud of herself. Like whatever your thoughts ethically or morally about what Tyra did, she was a success by every standard, mm -hmm. a, you know, an, a black woman who did this on her own and it's incredible. And it's just weird because, and it's sad. She uses that fame and wealth to find her, girl that she felt was her bully and i don't even think that's what happened you know well it was known in the fashion world that they had a feud so right it was like a big rumor yes and so th all of a sudden whenever this uh, 2007 2008 whenever this show occurs um it's almost like you know tyra's make she gets to she's in the driver's seat you know naomi has all this bad press and tyra's the one who's won and now she's gonna confront her and it's like i'm sure naomi campbell knew what was she was there to happen but i think right as we'll see i don't think she realized just how essentially uh unprofessional this interview is to say the least yes so let's get into it i guess yeah, let's get into it okay years in the making supermodel tyra banks supermodel naomi campbell now on tyra it has to be just me and naomi alone the backstabbing, the name calling, the cat fight on the catwalk. You called me the B word. You said you'll never be me. Years of runway rivalry. I felt like you were terrorizing me. Explode in a dramatic confrontation. Why, Naomi? An all new Tyra starts now. Tomorrow is my conversation with Naomi, and it's been a lot of years of pain and a lot of tears and. And I still have all those memories of a lot of negativity, negativity from the press. I had to live through it and it wasn't easy. I'm nervous about it. She probably is too. I don't know, we'll see. I'll see you tomorrow, Naomi. I mean, I just wanted to say like, there's truth to like, the racism that exists with like there can only be two big black top models you know and the press you know uh i guess pushing them off each other you know i'm sure that happened yeah yeah and the what's sad is like it seemed like both of them could probably come together and say isn't it fucked up our racist culture tried to make it seem like there could only be one big black you know female top model but instead, it feels like Tyra like engages in it, and I'm not trying to say that's well, her fault. Well, she makes it personal, right? And... I, what's Tyra's fault is what we're about to see, where she makes it super personal, not the system of racism that exists. By the way, yeah. Today, it's about telling the truth. It's about being honest. 
Because without honesty, there's no way that you can heal. And today is a healing day for me. And I hope it is a healing day for Naomi too. I remember the very first time I saw a picture of Naomi. I was around 12, 13 years old, and I was sitting in the kitchen with my mama, and we were looking through some magazines. And there was this picture of this model, this black, beautiful model. And I was like, Ma, look how beautiful she is. It's funny, I felt worlds away from Naomi Campbell when I looked at that picture. But the ironic thing is that she would become a significant part of my personal history. And to admire somebody so much and to follow in their career, to actually follow in her footsteps, it was overwhelming for me in a lot of ways, especially since I was just a teenage girl at the time. And the press had cast Naomi and I as rivals before we had even met each other. And there's conditions in the modeling industry that are fueled by rivalry because back then, let's say there were 10 top models, 10 of them. But there was an unwritten rule, there was an unwritten rule, excuse me, that only one of them could be black. Only one. Ten girls, but only one could be black. I think, again, this is all about empathy and all about understanding this. Again, that's why I think a lot of the um, YouTube and Twitter, not all of them, not every single one, because I haven't ever watched everyone just essentially say Tyra Banks is racist and did all this awful problematic stuff. But I think... So when Tyra says, you know, we were played off each other and there could only be one African-American out of 10 girls, there's a lot of pain that comes from that and, and victimization from the system. Like, it's just interesting to talk about this and then think of the porn episode we just talked about too. Yeah, yeah. Victims of a kind of the system and how we... But I think the question is, like, how do you play within that system? Yeah. And we're going to see that... Tyra immediately focuses on Naomi as the bully. Tyra is the good one, and I want you to apologize. Yeah, and again, it's all your fault for the industry. Like, you, you know, it's pointing at one person trying to say, this is, this whole thing is your fault, right. you Right, know? instead of really pointing at the industry yes. of the racism exists within modeling. Yeah. And at, the, at that time, Naomi was that one black girl. Naomi Campbell set the modeling scene on fire almost 20 years ago when she was discovered on the streets of London and immediately began to saunter her way across the catwalk. As the first black model to grace the covers of French and British Vogue, Naomi was breaking down the walls of the predominantly white world of modeling. <laughs> Naomi traveled all over the world working with the most prestigious fashion designers and sought-after photographers. No way! By the mid-1990s, Naomi was amassing an empire, collecting more than $10,000 an hour from modeling jobs. From hit music videos to dozens of commercials, Naomi has worked with the best. I am who I am. Naomi was one of my biggest inspirations when I began modeling. To this day, I still remember the joy I felt when the press first compared me to her. It was one of the most flattering compliments I've ever received. But the compliments and comparisons soon turned to controversy. In the headlines, there wasn't enough room at the top for two black models. And the press orchestrated a fierce rivalry between us. The reports were relentless and fueled a feud between Naomi and myself. For the media, the catwalk wasn't big enough for the both of us. I don't have an in-studio audience here with us today, so I'm gonna ask you at home to please help me welcome Naomi Campbell. Hi. It's so weird because it's so quiet. I know. Hi. Oh. Have a seat. No. <laughs> okay, so the beginning of the interview starts with Tyra saying that there is no audience, and it's another way of being like, there's not going to be somebody clapping for, for you. you. 
Yeah. It's it's a control me- method. It's like feels like weird say, it's torture. It's super awkward as well. Yeah, it feels like a torture technique. Like usually when you're interviewed, you have the audience to kind of back React. you up. Yeah, in some cases, be neutral too. Yeah. Yeah, sometimes the audience can be against you. That's true, but a lot of times they're the neutral person to back uh-huh. you up. And so she's like, "I want to welcome Naomi Campbell," and Naomi's walking out as if they're supposed to be an audience. <laughs> yeah. And it's like there isn't. It's and, really uh, oh, brutal. she also says like, "We're gonna bring them out later." <laughs> yeah. So, so Naomi's walking out, and it feels like Tim and Eric sketch. Like nobody's yeah. out there. Yeah. First of all, Naomi, I just. I want to thank you for coming here. You're um, this is not easy for me. I know it's not easy for you too, especially with so many years and years of. But I thought it was a good idea. What did you think when, when? Because I didn't want to call you personally because I wanted the first time for us to see each other. It's been a while. I, I didn't want to see, see you before here. the show because I think yes. it's better to be fresh. Um, but I'm happy to be here. I'm really happy, and I said yes right away. Yeah. I want to go back to. Um, when I was 17 years old, mm-hmm. so that was about, what, 14 years ago. Well, that was, and how old was I? I was uh, 17, I was 18, 18, 20, 21. 21. Yeah, yeah 21, so, 19, 91. Yeah, 1991. And I, I don't know if you know this, but even before I left for Paris, I had your pictures plastered all over my bedroom walls. I didn't know. Yeah, all. Oh. <laughs> oh. Okay. <laughs> okay, give me your thoughts immediately. <laughs> So, Naomi uh, sitting there, um, Tyra immediately goes into how much she was a fan of Naomi, just setting it up to be like, you crushed my dreams, you know? (laughs) You crushed my teenage hopes and dreams. Uh, I just want to let you know that I was your biggest fan, and then you ruined that. Right, like she's starting to cry. It's already like... I'm I'm the victim, Naomi. Look at me. I loved you. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I had your pictures all over my bedroom walls. And I don't know if you remember. Do you remember the Azadina Laya fashion show? Yeah, that we did when together? we had the braids. Yes. Yeah, I we remember. Had the and the little white frilly things. Yeah, yes. I remember. So you remember well. that fashion yeah, yeah. show? And I called my aunt. I said, she's right behind me. Oh, my gosh, she's so beautiful. She's right here. Can you believe it? Can you believe it? Can you believe it? Just, just a couple of weeks ago, I was at home looking at her pictures, and now I'm in a fashion show <laughs> with her. But, Naomi, do you remember what you said to me? That's now, I want you something to... awful and cruel. Awful. What did I say? You said, I heard you talking about me. Which I do. I hear everything from everywhere. Yes. No, but no, you said you heard me physically. You were right behind me. You right. heard me talking about you. You called me a, the B word, uh-huh. and you said, and we have a photo shoot to do in Anguilla, and it's not going to be pleasant if, I, if you're talking about me like that. I probably did and say that. Why did you say that? Because I probably just heard the tail end or just thought it must be negative, which yeah. it wasn't negative, so now something yeah. new. Okay, so uh, Tyra tells her first story, which is I was at a fashion show, and I called my aunt to say I'm with Naomi Campbell's here, and I was so excited. And then what happens? She said that she was standing right behind her, and then Naomi heard the tail end of the conversation and was like, hey, bitch, uh, keep my name out of your mouth, basically. And, like, at the photo shoot, you better, like, we're, we're going to have to do this together. We're going to have to work together. And if we are, you better, like, stop talking about me. Right, like, it's going to be bad if you don't stop talking about me. And, and yeah. like, already Naomi is being, like, super... Um, like gracious and I'm so sorry now keep, we're yeah. never gonna know the truth of this story but like she's I mean I, I fully believe what she says a lot of the time is like I just don't remember that that's kind of what she says throughout this interview well see like I can I, I, I'm if I'm trying to like be both sides of this I can see th- I mean because Naomi does say at first like I'm I think I probably did say something mean. yeah and I and but she said I heard a lot I always heard people saying like it, it implies to me that Naomi might have heard that Tyra was talking shit about her in a separate way yeah but, but exactly I'll, like I, like maybe the story of Tyra saying I was talking to my aunt about you who knows what the truth is of that like I guess we can't we'll no, never right. know the truth, like because this is just two people's points of view. But that's that's the thing. Like you'd think um I don't know. Well these I, things have clearly stuck with Tyra for her whole life. She's thought about them in really negative ways, as mm-hmm. you would uh 
with like the first impression that you get as like a you know a young adult of people talking about you and drama and stuff like that it it, it sticks with you so hard and like mm -hmm. remains with you so you can tell like you know tyrus put so much thought and in this almost obsessive way about naomi and right. you can tell naomi just part of this was funny because you can tell naomi is just like i i don't think about you and like mm -hmm. um i i wasn't aware and you know i'm sorry if that came across but she doesn't actually have any connection mm -hmm. you know yeah so i'm really sorry that was upsetting what are some of the things that um specific things that people would say you and you could it, don't have to worry about hurting my feelings or anything um, about me or about our you know coexisting in an industry what are some of the specific things they would say and i can tell you some like it's the regular, regular she wants to be you but mm -hmm. it's that those things for me it doesn't matter now it's now that matters for me and the timing of did I understand or did I believe in those people? Those mm -hmm. people didn't also help me because those people would still be the same people around me who would watch me be sad and watch me self-medicate and not and tell me, Naomi, you look beautiful, you look fine. Mm -hmm. I don't want those people around me. Those are the people that are very dangerous to have around you. Mm -hmm. So those people are no longer in my life. But at the time you bought into what they were saying? At the time, yeah. I'm trying to understand. At the time, at the time everything was just... There was photographers, there was editors, there was stylists, there was makeup and hair. It was just like, But did they ever compare? Drama. Because they would compare constantly. Oh, she's compared. three years older than you. I'm like three years, four years old, or of four years. They That's compared. the same thing. That's something that I constantly heard over and over again. And, but what I wanted to say, and, and to be very clear to you, is when I started be, to become a fashion model, I never tried to look like no, you. No, but that's how they, they made. That yeah. was a certain look. Okay, this is, uh, in this, it's like Naomi's essentially trying to say there was people in my ear talking shit saying Tyra wants to look like come on this is the fashion world of course they said stuff like that to her like people are catty in any industry but this is the ultimate one and she was saying like these were hanger on type people that let me do drugs and weren't my best interests weren't really in their heart and she seems to be very like I'm sorry but it's like you almost want to be like you don't even need to apologize like it's the modeling industry but she's being very gracious about this transparent yeah, yeah and yeah. and Tyra um you know I don't think we're getting into anything too bad yet like you know yeah, there yeah. was a certain look you were the only one you're only black girl make every black girl's hair look like that make every black girl's makeup like that right. and that wasn't something that I, I perpetuated want, I um and I remember um and for the Aliyah thing, you know the story with the Aliyah when you said... Uh, with the, the, the hair of the braids? Yes, the yeah. Aliyah fashion show when I was talking to my aunt and you, you know, kind of accosted me in the hallway uh -huh. there. Um, and then we went on that trip. We went on that trip in Anguilla. Anguilla. Yes. Mm -hmm. And it started beautiful. I was like, she, mama, I called my mama, mama, she brought me into her room and gave me vitamins. She was so I sweet to me. I remember we were at Cap Jaluka. Yes, we were at Cap Jaluka. Yeah. But I remember being on a boat and I get seasick. I was very seasick on you this boat. You were seasick on that boat? Oh, I was, I yeah. I, I don't tell people. Like, I didn't, uh. especially in the beginning of my career. I just say, I'm just taking a nap. Really, I wanted to grow up. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I was laying down on this uh, little plank thing. Uh, yeah, well, that boat shot there. I was laying down on a plank. I'm mean, laying down on a pillow. Yeah. And you came and you sat down next to me. And you, you, I think you let me put my head in your lap or you, or you put my, my feet on your lap. Right. And you're like, sweetie, are you okay? Are you okay? And I said, actually, yeah, I'm okay. I'm okay. And then you said, I have to ask you something. Right. See, I remember this because I was so new and young. You said, I have to ask you something. Do they try to make you look like me? Right. And I said, um, I don't know about so much now, but in L.A., yeah, they really did with the little short black wigs that. and you stuff. You told me that. Yeah, yes. I remember. And Naomi, you got up, pushed me away, and said, yeah, I thought so. And you turned. I did. You went from the sweetest woman that was giving me vitamins to someone that terrified me on that trip. Oh my god. And Okay, so like it sounds like Naomi's even agreeing that this story might have happened. Um and okay, all I can think of is like, oh, that's catty and that's shitty and it has to do with racism within the industry and you know, Naomi essentially being upset that she's trying that Tyra's saying all these people are making us black girls dress like you and look like you and it's like I that's they have every right to feel upset and exploited and like the machinations of this racist industry. I think ultimately though, my feeling is like, this could all be a conversation that happened not on camera. No. And yeah, I don't know if you like, it's funny because at the very beginning she was like, 
they didn't even talk to each other before this. Like they they never that, had which a is such a bad idea. It is a terrible idea. <laughs> it's like well, they should definitely all talk. All the awkwardness just gets exposed. You're not like there's no warmth. It's all breaking the ice, you know? And mm-hmm. by the time like this interview is done, the ice is broken and everything has like a more positive feel which it probably should have been began in the with. beginning. Yes. Right. Yes. Understandably, I, I can understand. I was told on that trip that I was sent home because you don't want me there anymore. So no, I didn't that's finish not that trip. True. That's what I was told. I don't have the power that in the winter. There are some specific things that I remember as if it was yesterday that hurt me and hurt me to my core. And I want to ask you about that. And I want to see if you remember them too. We'll be right back. Okay, this is where I think things start to get weird. It's like, this is already a strange really surreal situation again this could have just been a conversation that happened privately um it, it's like um but naomi's just kind of again nicely saying i'm really sorry this happened and then now we're getting into what what i think where this becomes like aggressive aggressive and bullying naomi on, on tyra's part yeah yeah um do you remember that photo do yeah remember i remember that? I remember that photo because we didn't say one word to each other. It was after the thing that happened on the boat. Right. And it looks like we're just chilling and talking, but if you see there, you can, I feel the ice in that picture because I remember it like it was yesterday. I that, don't remember. You don't remember? There I was remember no, only about the... There was no communication. I went from calling my mom, mm-hmm. like, you know, saying, oh my gosh, she's so amazing, to calling her going, I don't know what happened. Right. We just did a photo. She didn't speak to me. Like I, don't remember, I remember just with you, I remember you tell me about the wigs. I don't remember anything else. You don't remember anything else? Anything else? But I remember that the end of that trip was not very, it was very cold. We did a fashion show. I, I don't remember what it was. It might have been Jenny or something like that in Milan. And we were doing that fashion show backstage. And you came up to me right when I was about to walk out. And you said something. And it's so funny because it was so surreal at the time when you said it. I didn't think that you could actually say something like that. What did I say? You said uh, something like, you'll never be me, don't ever think that you'll be me, and something I like that. I said that? Yes. I can't think, that's something, I'm not that, I'm very Specific. much in the, yeah, I'm very much, I know the person that I am, mm-hmm. and I'm not someone to go and give myself away and say that to anybody. I've never said that in my life. So, but if that's what you remember, yeah. I accept that, but it's not, it doesn't sound like me to people that would know me. I'm not sure if you're understanding how how much it was painful for me. Okay, what are your thoughts? I think, um, you know, at this point, um, Tyra just feels very, very um, on the defense now, or offense, you could say, and is not really, like, open anymore. She's very much, like, kind of... Um, going about it in a way of like kind of she's kind of seeking revenge <laughs> right, right in a way by by telling these stories in this like really um like exactly the way mm-hmm. she remembers it and like there's no room for naomi's to say because she's saying i don't know if i remember it that way right she's saying like you sent me home she's like i don't think i sent you home uh, uh, um i think and also this is so awkward because it's like this is this isn't an interviewer like Barbara Walters or something interviewing somebody that's supposed to be neutral. Like I don't know if the interviewer is supposed to interrogate. That like if if anything, Tyra should and Naomi should there should be some kind of person to mitigate both. It's because right. inherently this is Tyra's show and she's in control. So that's why it starts to feel really kind of ugly and bully like and it starts to feel it like, feels like naomi's trapped in a corner right right with no audience no one to help her literally yeah. right and i think it was truly a painful time for you but i don't want to speak for you mm-hmm. but and i don't think you you know this either that 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 experience between you and i was one of the most difficult times in my entire life so she says that she was traumatized, essentially. But because by Naomi. what Naomi Campbell got mad at her about on the boat, excuse me, about the people, you know, are people, are you, are you being purposely in LA made to look like me? 
then she claims Naomi got her kicked off the shoot, and then what? Then, then she um, calls her mom, right, and is like, "This is what happened." Yeah, yeah, well, crying. I, I, I sure. guess the point is, is saying it's like Tyra's now saying, "I, you caused me to have the most difficult time in my life," instead of the the industry caused me to have the most difficult right. time in my life. It seems like this it's like a really brutal thing to blame this on Naomi Campbell, even if Naomi did say some rude stuff to her. Right. And then again, this could have all just been a conversation that two people had alone. Yeah. In my entire See, for me, life. I can be really honest. I love modeling. I love this industry. It's given me a lot. It's shown me a lot. It's made me travel the world and meet amazing people. But with what I'm going through in my life in the last five or six years and what I've gone through and what I've come to know in making my mistakes, in maturing with my family, with myself, with my um, relationships. It's not life-threatening and it's not that deep. I, um, I really, it's not about, I didn't, I didn't know myself at that mm -hmm. age. I, don't I want to know what 20, between 20 to 25 year old really does know themselves mm -hmm. at that age. It's especially in such a whirlwind career what I was envious of you was you had your mother with you mm -hmm. I never was able to have my mother with me I always remembered you had your mother at all your shows and she was always mm -hmm. there with you and I felt that that's I wish that I could have my mother with me why couldn't your mother be with you because she just had a baby mm -hmm. and um, it wasn't possible she had to raise my brother let me tell you why my mother was with me when I went to Paris my mom wasn't with me we couldn't afford it Mm -hmm. I went at 17 years old, right out of high school. Right. So she actually had two jobs when I left and went to Paris. Right. We couldn't afford it. And there was a, a, a situation. Um, it was a Versace fashion show. Um, I was backstage getting my hair and makeup done. And this is about a year and a half into this feud thing that yeah. was going on. Okay, so, so what... She, <laughs> right, go, you go. You know, Naomi was like, she's talking about how Hard young it was. she was when all of this was happening to her which is very true and at that age you know as, you can be petty and and then grow out of that mature right. and then that's see what how she was to say. yeah that's what she was trying to to tell tyra and she tyra has every reason to to understand that you know she could Ooh. relate to that if she wanted to but and then like naomi said something that bothered tyra which is, I think, a, a really valid point that Naomi is making. Like I said, that, you know, Naomi was, you know, this young girl. She was going all over the world doing whatever she wanted to do, making tons and tons of money. And her mother wasn't there by her right. side. And that that is, like, a lot of the reasons why she was probably making some mistakes she did not have a parental figure in her life right. that was um you know had her had, had her, her back throughout this whole thing and so she mentions to tyra you know like you're lucky that you had your mother with well, you right and she's also doing it to connect to tyra she's trying to say hey God, hey tyra right now we're you're being really divisive how about she's trying to look at tyra and connect and say you know what I really, what I loved about you, you know, you or what I wished I was like you was that you had your mom there. Yeah. And like, I think that was so great. Your mom was there. She's trying to like say like, I, I envied you. Like, yeah. you had this family dynamic. And instead of Tyra going, you know what? Maybe I should think about how Naomi, like mm -hmm. you just described, was, was kind of like let loose and didn't have that family there to have her back she, she instead went right back to a goes, different story she said says my mom was there because because of you well, that's what we're about to hear but she's essentially and she's lying this is totally insane trying to say the reason my mom protected me is because of what people like you essentially and then uh, i think his name was angelo or italian name can't remember his name angelo angelo was that his name mm -hmm. okay angelo called me um and he said tyra i need to talk to you and right. i said okay and he had a really lo weird look on his face and I said, um, what is it? He says, I have to cancel you from the fashion show. Right. And I was like... And you instantly thought that was because no, of me. No, I didn't. I didn't. Okay. And I said, why? I just did my fitting. I did everything. The show's about to start in 20 minutes. And he gave me a look and kind of did like that toward you. And I was like, okay. Well, do you ever know Johnny Versace? No. Okay, so just, if anyone that knows knew him, him knows work. you. I could never do that. But just so you know, you're not alone. Kate Moss was canceled after doing a fitting in a rehearsal. Yes. No, no, no. So I've, been, I've been canceled as a model a lot. I'm not, I'm not I mean, blaming you. That I'm was, that was the Johnny Versace way. Yes. Like, 
Um, oh, no, he's we notorious. Do, I knew yeah, he, was he was notorious, notorious for canceling at the that. last minute. So that's not, not what I'm saying. Nothing to do with me. I mean, I, yeah. This is not my opinion. This is something that somebody did Someone a head nod. Said, yes. Yeah. So again, it's like, it's like she's saying you were canceled, and that be, she's saying I got canceled because of you. Off the off, off the Tyra got canceled off of the runway show for um, Versace. Versace. But but what's weird is like Naomi's like I didn't cancel you like. Everyone knows Gianni Versace would cancel models at the last minute. You're not alone. Kate Moss has been kicked right. off, booted and, off of and, his his shows. So. And then all of a sudden, Tyra's yeah. like, "Oh, I know," like because she's upset. Not, and then she's like, "I'm not blaming you." Because, but let's let's be honest, she's also insecure about the fact that Versace, who isn't alive anymore, but at this point, probably was friends with Naomi Campbell. Oh, absolutely. And like that again, that was the celebrity scene that. Tyra was not in, in, no, no, involved no. with, that's, yeah, that's which upsets a, Tyra. Yeah. So it's like she's both, jealous. Yeah, both it's both Tyra going, oh, I know that's what he was known for, but then also saying, oh, hey, this dude motioned over to you. Maybe number one, maybe what he was motioning over was Versace only thinks one black girl should be in the show. Maybe it was his own racism, like you know, true, allegedly. Yeah. Who knows? I'm not saying that Versace is. Well, you know what I'm saying? Who knows? But um the point is, is she's getting it from just hearsay she's right. saying like yeah i heard from this person and right right and yeah. so instead of again this happening in closed doors and dealing with it it's exploited on tv for in tyra's mind it's i'm gonna get the world to hate naomi campbell even though what she should be mad at is a horrible fucked up racist industry so i picked up my backpack walked out and i was like you know what this is enough Mm -hmm. This is enough because I couldn't, I just couldn't take it anymore. I, I couldn't take it anymore. I went to a pay phone. You called her. I called my mother and I said, Ma, I can't take it anymore. I dropped down to my knees mm -hmm. on, in that pay phone. People were walking by, asked, trying to help me in French, and I was, they didn't know I was okay. It was just emotional. Right. I said, I can't take it anymore. And I said, if she wants it this badly, she can have this entire industry. Mm -hmm. I got accepted to five colleges. I'm coming home and mm -hmm. I'm going to school. Right. That's what I told my mom. Um, my mom kind of calmed me down and, and I said, well, the only way that I can do this is if you are by my side every day. single oh, day. God. So again, it's... That's not true, by right, the that's, way. There's no... I, you know, I disagree. I agree with you. Like, I don't think that's true. And it's again saying, no, like, first of all, Naomi saying this didn't happen. Like I didn't control Versace, Gianni Versace. I wasn't gonna min get him to kick you off. And then it's so it's at once Tyra trying to say the thing you envy about me, which is my mom. She had to be there because of people like you to protect me. I mean that's that's really I think over the top. And I have empathy for Tyra Banks. And essentially she must have just felt like I there can only be one black model. And I like why can't I be part of it? That's awful. But to put it all on this other. I think, it, I think awful. also, you know, she didn't have to do that. She resigned in that, like, herself. She could have, like, still... And she still did. What am I talking about? Like, she she became successful in her own right. And that didn't define her in those aspects. But I think she wants to play this victim in this situation, you know? Right. Instead of instead of a conversation about the system, it's a, it's a conversation of, you did this to me. You made modeling bad for me. And also, look where I am, and I'm in the seat to con to to shame you, and that's really fucked up. Well, she has the power at this. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But don't you think some of the things are like blown up a little bit? When I would read the press, they'd be like, "But this didn't happen. Mm -hmm. We didn't have a fight on the runway. This, I mean, it really was yes. blown up out of proportion." No, most definitely, it was definitely blown up and perpetuated. But there, to me, there are certain things in the press that come from nothing, and then there are certain things that come from truth. Absolutely. And I do feel that well, the it press, came from somewhere. It came from. It, but I it mean, the stuff truth. that was written was not was exaggerated. Was you know people adding that little here and bits oh, here always, and there. Oh, that's always that's always going to be. And that's always going to be that truth. way. Because the because negative press wouldn't have made me want to quit. Only if there was mm. only negative press. You know, I was. To be honest, Naomi. I'm fearful of you to this day. Not right now. I feel safe. I feel like it's just me and you. There's not a lot of hoopla. Right. But even a couple of seasons ago, keep them a couple of years ago, when we did the Victoria's Secret fashion show, and I walk in the room and I see you, I'm like, I start shaking. My heart starts beating faster. I go back to the 17-year-old girl yeah, that, you used to be. that I used to be 
when this powerful, strong icon woman that I looked up to was terrorizing right. me. Like this is this is this is the kind of stuff that like I even talk about now where it's like someone's like, I literally am shaking it because you are making me feel so unsafe. And it's like, whoa, what? Naomi Campbell's not fighting you. Like, whoa, whoa, maybe you're nervous or maybe you have this trauma from the but industry. She's, I think she's taking what happened to Naomi about uh, her uh, uh, saying that she was guilty in assaulting people. And she's saying in this moment, I'm afraid of you as if yes. it's a physical thing. Yep, you're and right. And then she goes mm -hmm. on to say, like, I feel safe with you in this room. But even at this Victoria's Secret show a couple of years ago, I saw you and started shaking. Right. And it's like, that's so unfair. It's like saying it's, she's she was also just as funny. She was just talking about the exaggeration of the press. And she's being extremely exaggerative of these things that like you know she, yeah she's saying she's controlling this narrative in every way it's and it's like the, it's like the joke of like a movie where someone's like oh i feel unsafe around you and the person's like wait what i didn't even do anything it's like it's un really really it's it's saying look naomi campbell did these awful things about throwing stuff at her assistants and stuff but it's using the actual victims of people being you know abused by a naomi campbell and projecting it onto tyra like oh those people are victims I'm a victim, too, of your violence. And it's like, wait, no, Naomi Campbell didn't violently attack Tyra Banks. It, all, it sounds like everything that happened was, like, maybe some cattiness, but it was really the fault, again, I keep harping on this, of the system and yeah. the industry. And to, to literally say, I'm afraid of you, is just brutal and yeah. unfair. Yes. I'm having the conversation with Naomi Campbell that I have wanted to have for so long and the day is here. There came a time in my career where I started to gain some weight. I started to get curvier and I was told by my modeling agency that I needed to lose some weight. So I tried to lose some weight and I was like, you know mm -hmm. what, this isn't for me. Right. And I'm gonna have my agency call Victoria's Secret, call Sports Illustrated so that I can change my career and won't have to worry about being so thin to be a high fashion model. And to this day, that's the story that I tell the press as right. to why I left the fashion industry. I just didn't want to fit in those clothes anymore. I didn't want to have to, to, to be super healthy and eat only chicken and vegetables. But that's only 50% of it. Mm -hmm. The other half of that is I was tired of having to deal with you. I was tired of that pain. I was tired of the comparison. I was tired of constantly hearing that I got canceled from this job or this or that or this photographer was called or this magazine was mm -hmm. called and, and was telling to not use me. Mm -hmm. So I made a conscious decision and I said, you know what? I'm tired. I'm so tired, tired of this. basically saying here that her treatment from Naomi was worse than all of the things in the industry yeah that's crazy um she's like i which you know this is it's funny because she's like the reason why i told everybody that i left the modeling industry is because i didn't want to um i didn't want to diet and to fit into like the sizes that they wanted me that i had to be in so I, I did Sports Illustrated and Victoria's Secret. And that, that too, is just a, a branding tool that she used at that time. Um, but then she's saying, like, that wasn't really the truth. I had to say that because I didn't want to tell people that it was because of Naomi Campbell. Right, right. Again, it's like, my mom was there protecting me because of you and your brutality. And then I decided to do Sports Illustrated because of people like you that made me, you know, it's like... Yeah, and it's, like, subtly blaming her for the other stuff as well. Right. Yeah, for all of the industry's problems. Right, and, like, and it's, like, that's that's so unfair. And yeah, it's it like, is. I, why was, you know, it makes you want to be, like, why was there only five years of the Tyra show? How, I mean, if there, I think the show was relatively popular for a fa daytime show. I could be wrong, because she was, you know, she would do stuff that was, like, talked about in the world. But, like, it sounds to me like, I can only imagine how harsh of a person she like. Like, I assume maybe somebody might have been like, "Hey, I don't know if this is a good idea, like to like brutalize Naomi Campbell because you can't like Oprah doesn't interview 
someone she hates like that's unfair there's a power it, dynamic well, it's, and it's a conflict of interest right it, it, it's like and it's that it's yeah sh- you know whatever happened she was in control and she got to do it and i think you want to say i wish there was someone saying to tyra like naomi campbell isn't that powerful like you, you know this isn't really about naomi campbell and it's like, about yeah it's actually about tyra's delusions about naomi as this uh, villain or yeah <laughs> right the boogie woman who and it's, represents it's like, clearly, everything bad about yeah them yeah it's like tyra's kind of like not meaning to but she's revealing so much of her own weird um like neurosis or like you yeah, know yeah. just like her obs- this unhealthy obsession with that she's had for her whole life with naomi campbell right First of Wait, all, do you have proof I don't, that photographers were called? Do you have any proof I have some close people with big names that I definitely will not tell their names today because they kick my butt. Yeah. But, I, but I have to say that I do believe a lot of it. I do believe a lot of it because there's a lot of these people have no, nothing to gain yeah. mm-hmm. by saying that. What is she saying that they told her? Uh, uh, she's just saying that Naomi um, was the reason, like, but, they're going back to what they were saying what they were talking about before about her being kicked off of the runway shows oh, okay so it's like she she's stuck on that you know she's okay, not moving yeah, on okay. so it's, that's why it's confusing it's right so she's, she's like, going back and naomi saying is there any proof about the this she's saying oh i heard it's they're not people I that can are understand you want to believe it for me it's not important to me mm-hmm. as i said i'm in a part of my life even then where it's Life means more to me than that. This is just a, the fashion world is a small pinnacle in the hemisphere mm-hmm. of what really is going on. But what happened at that time for and me, I Naomi, what happened for me at that time is a big part of who I am today. It was one of the lowest points in my life, but mm-hmm. we all learn from the things that happen in our lives that are negative. And I think that's what made me start T Zone. I think that the, that rivalry has made me start America's Next Top Model mm-hmm. because I says I will never be what that represented. Right. And I went 100% against that and said, and, and, I, and I don't think it was a conscious thing. It's something I look back on now and you go, maybe that's be. why. Maybe that's why I started my T-Zone. Maybe that's why I started America's Next Top Model. Maybe that's why I have this talk show. Mm-hmm. So to, to teach that no matter what people say or do or try to look at women as marionette puppets that they want to create this bickering and this battle and right. this fighting, that... That we Doesn't have to, we be, have that to be bigger than that. Absolutely. We have to be more responsible than that. And so experiencing that and being, I think, a victim, both of us, victims of that. And there's so many it more things me out there to be victims of. But I don't actually want to ever say that I'm a victim. Okay, well, there's two, there's a couple really interesting thoughts I have. Like, first, it's Tyra saying, like, oh, I, I, I'm, look at me. I, I'm really, you know, powerful and I made these really, uh, successful businesses or you know things but then it's her saying hey like they were treating us like puppets and controlling us um and then of course naomi's like oh i'm not a victim but but i think you know there's something is interesting where it feels like what tyra really wants is she wants to become this the person who controls the puppet strings like oh you're gonna say that we had you know this uh you're going to sell papers by pitting the two black models against each other. Well, how about, what if I'm in control of that and I sell it in my own personal way? Like, like it's like, not only is she selling the, like it's really twisted. She knows that Tyra Naomi is sells a lot. Like there's a video right now we're on YouTube where it's like a million views of about the feud. So it's almost like Tyra's like, well, I want to control if someone's going to make money off of it, it better be me. It's almost like if they were like, what do we, what episodes of your show should we do, Tyra? Well, let's do a Naomi Tyra feud. But but not only is she using that and making money off of it, she's making it her own. She's making it into her own struggle session. She's, she gets to bash Naomi over the head. So it's like, not only do I get to be part of the evil system, but I also get to make it personal. That's why this is so interesting and mm-hmm. weird. It's like, wait, number one, fuck you want to be part of the evil system that was part of what makes america's next top model so weird it was like exactly we're gonna redefine this and we're gonna push black and you know asian all kinds of different girls but then her own insecurity gets it always gets in the way of what she's doing and she actually ends up doing the opposite right it's what she's saying exactly it's always like i'd rather be in control than 
to to destroy the system like i and and that's you know that's a complex thing because some people are just trying to survive and and but i think another thing that's sad is you know and this, this isn't so surprising in this kind of like capitalist hellhole where it's like uh naomi's like oh i'm not a victim i'm just going through the life but it's like it's not about saying oh you are a victim but rather th- what tyra just described isn't their fault and there's a this system created these feuds but they're handling it in two different ways is what i'm trying to say Mm -hmm. naomi's trying to ignore it and just kind of move on past it especially after all the stuff she's been dealing with with the court cases she had to go through and then tyra's like no 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 i want to control it and be a part of it you know i'm someone passing through my life it's gonna hit the lows it's gonna hit the highs it's gonna hit the successes. Yes, but in being a victim, successes. you don't have to, to let that conquer you. It's, it's, it's being it's not, victimized it's not and then being me. empowered. It's not going to conquer me. Like, it's like in terms of like when I wanted to go in recovery, it's the best thing I ever did in going to recovery. Mm-hmm. I learned so much about myself for years. From I can remember things from when I was three years old. Mm-hmm. And it was it just vi- very vividly. And I was like, wow. It's like what from when you were three? Things that like that just affected me now, that I and and at that time when I when it came into mean, my what mind. What do you mean by that? When I, I was when I was a child, um, something happened to me, and my whole family was like, no, 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 she's crazy. And sexual abuse. Me. And it wasn't really sexual abuse. It could have been, but I was very much of a child that I um, I came in and I, I I spoke up very much for myself. I was like, mm-hmm. so I screamed out, I was like, go away, and that by being loud. So it was the possibility but, of sexual yeah, abuse, but, but because she did I was stop loud, it. I got it. It didn't happen, mm-hmm. and I, you know, I just. It's, is this a way that <laughs> this this, is this whole up. interview parallels the this, the, the, to- the Sasha, Sasha Gray. Gray stuff? Yeah, it's very weird. It's like, um, what Naomi's trying to tell a story about how she got off drugs. I assume she got in recovery, right? And she was able to deal with trauma. It's basically what she's trying yes. to say. Yes, she said she recovered memories from her early childhood which you know that, whatever like, but well, right right like th- there's probably a real memory yeah and that she was able essentially she's just trying to say i dealt with some trauma through recovery and instead of tyra tyra could have just said it as oh so you dealt with some traumatic things and, and it healthy. helped you yeah but instead she it, goes well what was that recovered memory would you want to do you want to tell us about it she, and then she's like uh well she goes on and she doesn't say initially that it was sexual in nature and then tyra puts that on her she and is pulls like it out of her yeah oh were, was it were, were you sexually abused and, and you know it's like, she, like well i could i could have i don't know and like and, yeah well, she's and it's really fucked up it's like if a victim doesn't want to express that's what happened she doesn't she, you shouldn't push her no and again it's always like um number one oh i know what you're talking about i want to make it she's using the the specter of sexual abuse to make her look weak yeah almost or not weak but like this is like why you I know did this what's and, wrong with you. Yeah, I know. Naomi, and, yeah, I control you. I know what's wrong with you. Yeah, That's and it's almost so like twisted. Tyra's giving her the like the only out that she could ever have that she's offering to Naomi is by giving in. Yeah, to Tyra. giving like, giving you, in to Tyra and, and like being like, yeah, Naomi, like you want to tell us that this is why you did this. Really, is because you were sexually abused. It's yeah, like yeah. weird. It's like what she's trying it's to do almost, to Sasha too. Yeah, yeah, like Sasha Gray, admit you were sexually abused and that you're the ultimate victim and that I'm the ultimate empowered yeah. person. And it, and like as long as you bow down and agree, I'll let you squeak by as the victim. And the, and it's it's like again with Tyra, it's like. I know what you're talking about. You were sexually abused, weren't you? Give in to me. Yeah. And it's really inappropriate. And this is why people get upset with Tyra. Right. You're using this as a control mechanism. Yes. I was in the desert and I just was like, you know what? It's something that I want people to know that rehabilitation should be taught in schools because it's something, once you know the tools, you know when you're not happy, when to stop and say, I gotta take time out. Mm hmm. When to say, okay, I'm trying to please everybody. I'm not pleased, and this is not working for me. And not be afraid to say, I'm gonna, I don't, I don't want to do this anymore. Because there's a lot of like, you get so secure in one thing, and you say, okay, if it's over, what do I do? Mm-hmm. I'm not afraid of anything anymore. I'm willing to just face things. At as one they time, come. you were afraid. Yeah, what I were think you afraid definitely. Of? I was afraid, like when I, I just when I was realized I had to go to rehab, and I was like, okay. Um, 
I need to take off a month of work. <gasps> oh my God, I can't take off a month of work because I'm going to miss this, 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 this. And I'm going to miss this because I got a perfume. To I'm like, what did you think would happen at that time, the fear, if you I did had to. take off that month? What did it you wasn't think a fear would have of not, It wasn't a fear that I was going to, actually, I don't know. I wouldn't know. You could think it, your I stock would have gone down if it's you would have taken off that It's not about stock. Time? It's about emotionally drained, spiritually drained. I would have been no good to myself, mm -hmm. not healthy in mind, not healthy in spirit. I'm sure she, you know, her addiction was, Naomi's addiction problems had everything to do with the industry that she was working in. Right, it was a way know? to cope. And so what she's saying here is like, you know, I was really scared initially when I went into recovery because it meant that I had to quit my addiction of fame, of mm -hmm. drugs, of partying, of shows, of working, you know, all of that. It, I'm, I, I'm sure that was insane. Right. You know, her whole life at this point is totally different. And the way that she's dealt with it is probably, you well, know, right. like. And, and I think it's interesting. The only thing that Tyra had to say was, what are you afraid of? And, and I think I think Naomi was like, you just noticed she was like, I don't know, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna tell you. Look what you just said, when I look how you just responded, um, I, which I, it's almost like now Naomi's at least trying to protect herself a little more. Right. Do you feel like you've had to put up a lot of defense in this industry to, to survive in a, in a insane world? I put up I put up defense because I don't want to show my vulnerability. I put what up defense like it's like. I think people who really know me, Tyra, can, my really close friends, you know, I have a big heart, I'm very generous, when I'm very loyal. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm happier now than I was in my 20s. I'm mm -hmm. much happier now, I'm much... Why is that? Because the way I was living my life then was too much. Mm -hmm. I was like trying to make everybody else happy, but I wasn't happy. Mm -hmm. You weren't happy? No. So what did you do when, by not being happy? Because to me, well, I tried to self-medicate and I numb, trying to numb my pain. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, '97 was a really difficult year for me. I lost six friends in very strange <laughs> circumstance. One of them being Johnny Versace. And I think that was a year that was a year when I started to go down because I was really not knowing how to cope with grief. I didn't know. Mm -hmm. You didn't know. And how did you deal with it? You dealt with it by taking... I, I self-medicated myself. Mm -hmm. um, I drank. Um, I went out. I just was like, no, I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. Don't mm -hmm. worry about me. I'm fine. But each time another drama or another um, uh, um, grief uh, or death came into my life, I wasn't pr it wasn't enough time to catch up from the last grief. So it was just one big melting mm -hmm. ball. It just went rolled down. So when I met you, when I was 17 years old, say until I was a fashion model until about 25 years old, mm -hmm. were you self-medicating yourself at all no, during that time? No, I didn't take my first drug until I was 24 years old. 24, mm -hmm. really? Let's go yeah, back to I'm Paris. Funny. It's just funny, she, just, she keeps going back to the age and going back to the age of Sasha. It's like, I don't know, whatever. No, yeah, we know, com complete your thought. What were you oh, it's just funny, she harps on like the age of like, I was innocent, I was innocent. Um, Naomi's actually talk, trying to talk about death and recovery. She's not being a good interviewer, not even dealing with it all. Now it's back to Tyra. And in, anyway, it was just funny because she, she kept talking about Sasha's age. But um, she takes it. She wants, instead of like actually having a real interview with Naomi Campbell, she wants to go back and make it be about Tyra, even though they just dealt with it. Let's go back to Paris. I'm 17 years old, mm -hmm. and all these people are saying these negative things. Oh, look out, Naomi. Here comes the new one. Uh-oh, you better get back. Oh, look, she's trying to look just like you. You better get that. How would you handle that now? If, if you I could, had if that you could knowledge it, of... If you could do it all over again, um, how would you handle... I think I wouldn't... I just simply, really simply wouldn't have bought into it. I would have just not bought into it, and then it would never have escalated. Mm -hmm. I think when you buy into things... People are malicious, people like negative, like you said and sat here and gone over many times. And I think that only you are the one, if you pay attention, that makes it escalate. Mm -hmm. But I didn't realize at that time that's what would happen. I was like listening because I was not a little older than you, but I was also not in my mm -hmm. country. I was also used to, oh, you're this, you're that, you're this, you're that. I think, you know, it really is buying into it. Mm -hmm. If I knew then not to buy into it like I know now, it would never have escalated. And we would never be sitting on this couch right now. Uh, but I am happy to be sitting on this mm -hmm. couch right now. So, you know, I'm happy to, I don't know, I when you say 14 years later, mm -hmm. to be sitting here and to wanting to have done this show. And I didn't really tell anybody that I was coming to this show because I didn't want to have to hear what they thought. Mm -hmm. 
So I thought, I'll come. They all know I had to go to LA. We don't know what I had to come there for. And they will now. <laughs> but um, no, I'm happy that I came. Mm -hmm. I'm happy that you came yeah, too. I really am. I really am too. Are we ready for the audience? Yeah. Okay, because okay. I couldn't have done this with the audience here. So when we come back, we're going to have everybody here, the entire audience, and Naomi and I together for the first time in front of an audience in I don't know how long. A long you said time. 14 years. 14 so years. She's 14 years. Yeah. 14 years. 14 years. All right, we'll be right back. Before the break, I have to say that one of my wishes, one of the biggest wishes that I've ever had has come true. I had a conversation with Naomi Campbell, a long, in-depth conversation, and I got a lot of answers, and it has started my healing from all of the devastating rumors and gossip and rivalry and pain that I have experienced. I've started to heal, and I think Naomi has too. And now the audience is here, right? Okay. So it's like Naomi essentially gives in and apologizes. Well, you know, I'm glad. That's nice. Like, that, what a good, that's a great thing to do. I mean, whatever reason she did it, whatever, you know, maybe it was for Puri or maybe it was because she really did feel for her. And, you know, that's like, I think those are valid. Whatever happened, that that's cool. Like, but uh, I don't know. But it's like, at the same time, this is what Tyra wanted, which is yeah. kind of her giving in and being like, you're apologizing on the stage in front of everyone. Yeah, and then when the when the audience is allowed to come back in, um, they basically, the rest of the interview is basically about how pretty, like, Tyra is and how, like, um, you know. How you did it, you, you submitted to me. Yeah. Naomi, thank you so much for saying that because I have to admit, um, before the break, it was a beginning, beginning of a healing. I know. But I still felt the like... Closure. Yeah. Absolutely. I still felt like I don't think she's owning up to anything or, you know, and by you just saying that one thing, you have no idea I do. what my heart is doing now. Thank you so much. Like, that's insane. So, I mean, Tyra just basically said... I don't really think you were changing it during the break, Naomi. I don't think she's really apologized. Like, f what? Like, that is such mean girl shit. And then Naomi did it. She apologized, and she's like, it's almost like, again, Tyra knows that Naomi at this point was in a very precarious place with all the uh, stories and all the actual legal issues she was in right. for abusing You know, that's all real shit, by the way. She's already using that for her she's, show. She's, like, basically saying, if you want this chance for me to say, to, you know, to You're be a good the person or whatever. Right, You've the, changed. Right, then you have to submit to me. And it's just like, what? Also, Tyra, you're not even bringing up, like, if Tyra wanted to, she could bring up the people that Naomi threw shit at. She doesn't even care, clearly. She's not bringing up those people. All she cares about is herself. Like, if she was really <laughs> having a conversation about, like, Naomi, it does worry me that you've hurt other people. No. no. It's not about any other possible victims. It's just about her. Yeah. And it's almost like, okay, now that you're apologizing, you're cool. Like, that's yeah. insane it, too. Right. Thank you so much. Guys, sorry. <laughs> Oh, I'm tearing up right now. You're tearing up right mm -hmm. now. And one of the uh, things that I didn't know and that you didn't know is that your mom and me have the same exact, same exact birthday. birthday. Why, do, why do you think that made you tear up when you um, found that out? I'm going through a lot with my mother. Um, my mother has breast cancer and um, also cancer in the arm. And she's right now in, a, in America having treatment. So it's been a lot of things. I mean, a lot of having to learn and read and books and doctors and I'm her only daughter and she has a uh, my brother is 20 and so it's been a just how valuable and my mother's really been the only one there for me so mm -hmm. it's like been very much like learning something new which is fine I'm happy to learn and um, I know that my mother's I'm very optimistic and so is she and they have incredible um, doctors in America most definitely. And um, that's why I'm happy she's she got her help. here. And she's getting the best help, and she's very happy and optimistic. So, so when you, when you um, 
So the, the reason why you teared up is because you're going through that with your mother. You say that I look like your mother, which I have uh -huh. to agree. I look like your mom. And we share the same birthday. And, and we've had it. a history. Yeah. So absolutely. it was just a whole bunch of emotions. It was a whole bunch of things. And that just, like, put the lid on it for me. Mm -hmm. Wait, like, like, if they talked about Naomi's mom during the break or something, is she trying to imply, like, some kind of Freudian nonsense? Like, yes. I was your mom. That's I the way it ends up at the end. I wanted to. It's some weird I, thing. It always has stuck with, like, <laughs> this, this wasn't obviously in, like, uh, recorded, but is she trying to imply like maybe the reason I was jealous of you, Tyra, is because you looked like my mom and reminded me of my mom, so I was rebelling against you. Like that sounds like some weird new age uh -huh. hokum, like you know, goofy psychology uh -huh. stuff. Yeah. It's just strange. And her mom has her mom and Tyra has the same birthday, like, as if that means yeah, anything yeah. at all. And they look alike, or which whatever. I don't know if that's even true. <laughs> um, it's just it's just an interesting like. Um, strange thing that I, is i don't know well my prayers are, are for are with and for your mother Thank and i'm you. sure my audience and everybody at home too Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you uh, i didn't know that i'm so yeah. sorry She's a fighter. Yes, she's a fighter. Yeah, she's a fighter. Okay, now one of the things Naomi that um, that I was fearful of in the past was this reputation. Oh, Naomi, she's she's violent. She'll kick your ass. You uh -huh. know, like don't mess with her. And uh, so I was, I was, I never saw that happen. But you hear all these crazy stories. Oh, I've and, had um, some crazy st um, things happen to me in my life. Absolutely, some that I am not proud of. Um, that if I could turn the clocks back. I would not have a make them happen, which they'd never happened, but they happened. And as I said, I'm human and I make mistakes and I'm living with them, but I'm aware that they were wrong. Mm -hmm. I'm aware that no one should ever push you to the point of making you lose control. That is so important because it's, 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 it's all, everything you've ever, every self-respect is gone. It's gone. It's gone. So what do you do now? I walk away. Yeah. Um, I mean, it can be a boyfriend. It can be a, I have to walk away. I can't, I can't relapse on my anger. Mm -hmm. um, because what happens is you're Naomi Campbell, also, the millionaire, and they're like, hit me, it, hit also, me right here. This, exactly. <laughs> hit me right here. You know, they'll take it, try to take advantage of that. But there's been situations where it has come up that, you know, because I have had that past, it's easy for people to say, oh, she did that to me, and it is a payout. And mm -hmm. that's, that's the double, that's the double-sided sword, basically, mm -hmm. that what happens so with that. So now both Naomi, <laughs> Naomi and Tyra are, like, saying, oh, those people just want your money? Like... Oh, yeah. Now, now it sounds like Tyra but just, But it's funny because like, Tyra is the one that is doing exactly yeah, she, that. It's very funny. Well, it's just weird because it's basically... Like, more of what I was saying is, like, Tyra doesn't seem to actually care about Naomi's anger issues if she's basically like, oh, well, now you've submitted to me, so she, those people just want your money, Tyra. Like, Naomi, fuck them. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like... It's really selfish, you know, yeah. and myopic, and your like Tyra's existence is the only thing that matters. And oh yeah, Naomi maybe like fucked with some other people, but like whatever, it has nothing to do with me. You know what I mean? Well, you, you do know. have a sense of humor about it. I got it. I yeah. mean, I think um, I was sent a T-shirt last last Fashion Week. Someone sent me a T-shirt saying Naomi hit me, and on the back it said I loved it. <laughs> and they sent it yeah. to me. And they said, Well, will you wear it? And I said, Of course I'm gonna wear it. What else are you gonna do? But um. It's, you um, know what's so funny, uh, Miss Miss J, uh, you Alexander? know Miss yeah, yeah. Miss J Alexander actually wore that shirt. He wore. He on, got, how did he get one? I don't Where know. Did he get it he from? wore it on America's Next Top Model. Did not. So I was gonna blur it out. Do you want me to still keep it in the show? No, or do keep you want it me to in the show. Okay, it's in the show. Let me start making bags. It's in the show. <laughs> I was gonna blur it out. I was like, is she gonna think I did that? I didn't do that. Thank you. All right. No. Well, I know you have a sense of humor about this whole Violet Naomi thing, and you actually did a very funny commercial spoofing yourself. So you saw that? I have it. Oh, my Check God. Check this out. Yeah. No, I, I mean, it's, this is like a, another kind of element. I mean, this is kind of besides the point, but it's another element of, like, our culture, you know, has gotten much more sensitive these days and there's a whole conversation about that not you know i'm definitely but this is like making light of like pe her basically being abusive to the help or to you know people below her uh, or people working for her i guess is the better term which is fucked up and like again it's like saying there's a ra this awful system that w fucked with naomi and tyra and now they're both people in power in within what certain contexts and it's almost like laughing about oh look now we can have a sense of humor uh, yeah, about about abusing people. yeah like like um 
th- that to me showcases just how much Tyra's like fear and worry about Naomi's, you know, seems to be only about t- Tyra's issues and nothing to do with people that actually got hurt. And in this point, they're all just laughing about it, showing commercials about Naomi hitting people. I mean, it's fucked up. Yeah, I'm mentioning that, you know, well, it actually wasn't mentioned, but Tyra did a episode on America's Sex Top Model where one of the models, like, did a photo shoot. Of her throwing a phone or something? Yes. It's... And it was like this... It's like this weird joke. Jo- it's a it's a joke for Tyra, especially at the time. I'm sure to she was just like, of- "Oh my god, I'm gonna relish in this as much as possible." Right. If you want to get them, you can go to tyrashow.com and you can find out how you can get all of Naomi Campbell's products. Now- okay, I think really the meat of this is before the, you know, the audience comes back in. But ultimately, Tyra, I think, is a really interesting person because. She seems to not stay on script. She, in all of the things she does, she just, it's about her and her desire and her needs, you know? And right. It, and, and she always wants to hold the power. Mm-hmm. But actually, I think like the most, the, uh, I don't know, the most powerful thing that she could do is kind of relinquish some of that and, and kind of like appear human, not, not try vulnerable, to. Yeah. yeah be so infallible with everything and it, it actually it kind of um, backfires on her pretty much well, every time right that right. she does that and i think it's i don't know it's thinking about america's next top model and the way that she would you know they're like she there was all like there's there's something i always talk about how next america's next top model she like Tyra is always talking about how she takes acting lessons. Oh yeah, and like how she clearly she seems to be upset that she couldn't become a real actor. Like I guess Tyra was in this Coyote Ugly movie, but like basically nothing else, probably little things. Yeah. But there's all these parts where Ty- Tyra's doing like essentially skits, like, skits and improv stuff, and like the girls don't know about it, so she'll like fake a seizure on the floor. Right, it's right. Like, all of these dumb things. Or she'll things. put like she'll try to do like Eddie Murphy like jokey. She puts teeth and. And the point is, is like this, she makes it about her desires and herself and try, creating this. That's what's interesting about it. Uh-huh. She has a show, so she controls all the puppets. Like she said, the marionette strings. And it's like she gets the people to react in a way that she wants. Where it's mm-hmm. like, you guys need to understand. Like when she's talking about when she tried to do a singing career and she made everyone act in her mm-hmm. music video. Like she was like, do you know how hard this is for yeah. me to like do something? Oh yeah, totally. And it's like. She injects some weird like narrative of herself at the time of being like, this is about me and like. Right. You know, but I've been learning. I've been learning this whole time about myself, and that's like actually where everything kind of starts with America's Next Top Model too. Is like, I'm learning this all about myself and how I can change the industry by like knowing my worth and like all right. this kind of stuff. I mean, but, and that's the thing. And the people that she would choose, which by the way, nobody came became real models, right? Like that's the other joke of it all. The only person who really became a model didn't win in was the first a, season. Elise, yeah. who was like a third second or third runner up or something like that yes and um she you know clearly should have been the one that won but it wasn't about because you know you always had janice dickinson being like none of these girls are models like like yes, she'd be like most I love of her. you guys like she'd just be like you guys probably aren't gonna be real models you know she was always acknowledging how this thing was this yeah. fake creation but i think this was Tyra's world to make the decisions that she wanted, and she would. Sh- it was always about her insecurities and who she was. And I think these two interviews showcase so much about who she is, and the f- the in and really about who we are as people and our psychology and or, or and who and how we express ourselves and how we try to control the narrative. And um, anyway, I think it's really cool. Yeah, yeah. I'm losing totally. my voice, but <laughs> thank you guys so much for like checking these two interviews out with us uh, we want to do you know we want to do film stuff we want to do just this is all stuff me and Amelia talk about when no one's recording right right like we've talked about both of these interviews a million times and I hope you find it interesting um and yeah um well please uh listen to our next one whichever one it'll be but this is the <laughs> breathing problem productions podcast I'm Rusty Kelly and I'm Amelia McKay thanks for listening thank you <laughs>